need hump day to emote? Hello? Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now, but oh. when the music's playing, I can't hear you. Oh, 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 okay. I don't have any music in here. Well, you know what? A world without music is a world without happiness. So oh, I'm my God. You, you are just quoting, like, you know, you, you're, like, biblical today. You're just quoting stuff <laughs> all morning. Now, that's something I've never heard in describing <laughs> me, but I'll take it. I'll take it. If you, <laughs> if you start quoting the Torah right now, I'm going to be really scared. But. I'm not allowed to anymore. One of your friends, I'm not going to mention names, he said I butchered it so bad that I'm not allowed to. And I made a conscious effort, because I'm not looking to offend anybody, but I made a conscious effort not to speak my Yiddish. I still say shade upon them. Oh, 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 trust me. Oh, no. The Jews, oh, no. The Jews are very happy to, for you to stop being pseudo-Jewish. Yeah, <laughs> we don't want that. He said, he, he, he said it's just so it's, bad. It's so bad. It's so bad. It's just, it's embarrassing to everybody. Yeah, yeah and I wasn't trying to be bad. I was trying to be good. So you're setting until the, I can get better, then you're I'll, setting, I'll stop. You're setting the race back, like, you know, a couple of hundred years. So oh, for yikes, sure. Yikes, yikes. What did you do last night, Tom? <laughs> Obviously, he got put in the corner is what he did. I he had a little, I firing. went. I went out for a little mid Middle Eastern food. Whoa. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> practice, uh, practice on your presentation of your own shawarma for the Super Bowl. I mean, Bowl. in a strange way, yes, but nobody spoke English behind the counter, so I couldn't really get my little highlights that I needed to, um, <laughs> or lowlights. But I I'm pretty sure they saw you and they faked the no English. <laughs> <laughs> You get that a lot, don't you, Tom? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so it's a it's a little it's a place in my neighborhood, right? It's really good. It's a little local place, and um, they do like uh, they don't do lamb. They do beef, um, chicken. They do two kinds of chicken and beef shawarma. And they also do like a gyros, mm -hmm. but. Um, so they have the three uh, four spits running, you know, at the same time, and they do shish kebab too. So anyway, so I'm talking to the guy that I, I don't know if he owns it or he's a manager, or whatever he is. So I told him, I go, I bought <laughs> I bought the home um, I bought the home shawarma thing. Right. Did you, did you talk to him like this? Like you two are from a yeah, different country. Yeah. yeah and yeah. English wasn't your first language. So so I go, you know, I'm going to make my own shawarma for um, a party coming up. I'm going to uh, I got the home thing. And he started laughing. <laughs> 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 so I go, can you make me? I go, do you make these? You know, like, do you, do you? He goes, no, no, we buy them from like a wholesaler. And uh, I well, go, you're making yours. I what? want it fresh. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I will. But oh, yeah, um, yeah. I was going to, I was hoping he would, you know, make it for me. Buy, I could buy it from him. But he said, he, he started laughing when I told him I had the home version. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's like an easy bake oven. You, you, he said to me, he goes, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> you should do a vegetable spit first. That would be the best thing we for you. to give this restaurant manager his own segment on the show. <laughs> so last night I convinced Anton because he's going to be home for the Super Bowl. And the funniest thing was he goes, he goes, he goes, I'm going to be home Super Bowl weekend. He goes, but because I have a wedding to go to. And so I go, I go, okay, well, you can come over. And he goes, he goes, Who no, I think. it's married Super Bowl weekend? Hold it. It's even better. Anton goes, no, I, I think the wedding is the same time as the Super Bowl. I go, Anton, nobody, nobody in the world would have a wedding when the Super Bowl's on. Wait a minute. Didn't you and I go to a wedding at the Drake when the Super Bowl or some place? Was it the, was it Bulls maybe? No. In the Super Bowl? No. Or the Bulls playoff or something? No. They, they, the, 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 there could be like an afternoon basketball game on Super Bowl Sunday, but there would never, they would never schedule something. No, maybe not Super Bowl Sunday. I remember leaving the wedding with you, if I could remember, it was you. And it was the Drake Hotel. Who's and wedding? We Who's One wedding? of our buddies? No. At the Drake Hotel? I don't know. Thought so. I, I don't know. I don't remember. It seems like a very 
romantic evening for the two of you, though. <laughs> Ooh, moonlight at the Drake, Tom and Tony. Drake Hotel, we go down to that. What's that restaurant there that sells the... Co uh, Cote d'Or. Cote d'Or. It sells the turtle soup. Jay, and the okay, book you soup. love birds. I, I can see myself out. I don't have to be here. Hold on. Have you... <laughs> Thank you, Vanetta. Have you ever had the turtle soup? Yeah, I've had the turtle soup, the bookbinder soup, and they make the martinis. They give you the little extra on the side in the glass. Oh, that's Come a on. nice touch. I don't remember that. Yeah, well, because you're a Shirley Temple I mean, I don't a... drink martinis. I've never ordered, gone into a bar and ordered a martini. God, but... man, seriously, it's got to be like a robin's egg in a nest. I can't believe how, how that thing can't, can't hang. <laughs> <laughs> hey, God. Omaha. <laughs> <laughs> Vanetta, have you ever had? I can't hear her. That's a visual, right, Vanetta? <laughs> oh my God, no! Hold on, no, have you ever had? Bad have, bat. have you ever had the turtle soup at um, the Drake? What? No, are there turtles in it? I don't. I don't know if it's real turtles. I assume Why? it is. What about me says? Yeah, Vanetta <laughs> wants to eat some turtles. <laughs> I oh my god <laughs> i assume turtle soup has turtles but you can't really taste the turtle oh no <laughs> all i was told you know when i when i moved to chicago was you got to try the turtle soup at the drake hotel <laughs> it's true i mean it's oh, like yeah. old school but i did try it yeah. and it oh. was um it, it was good it was good uh, you know, though, um, Anton is like a vampire. Once you invite him into your house, you can't get rid of him. <laughs> oh, so what I was saying, the funny part was he, he said to me, he goes, no, I think I'm going to a wedding. I go, there's no wedding on a Sunday night Super Bowl. And he goes, he goes, are you sure? And I'm like, 100%. Nobody's having a, nobody's going to anybody's wedding on Super Bowl, you know, Super Bowl Sunday. And he goes, oh, all right. Well, then he goes, I'm going to come over, but I don't really, I'm not really into football, but I could deal pie gal and I go, okay, fine. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. He goes, I could be the house. I go, fine. Tony will, he's Tony will bring cash. He's going to lose the money for his plane ticket home and he's going to be stuck and then you're going to make him be your butler. <laughs> Something like that. This does not, this is not going to end well. Something like that. No kidding. Right. Uh, Bat, how about you? How was your evening last night? Uh, even last night was good. We had a we had a night off from hockey, but don't worry. Tonight again, seven forty five, late game. Gonna be fun. I watched the uh Hawk game last night. I don't know why. But they they tied it and then won it in overtime, right? They tied it in the last minute and then they won in overtime. Yeah. They gotta stop winning or we're gonna lose this first pick. I know. That's exciting. I know. <laughs> They've won like four of their last six or seven games, but uh, I know it's like they're on a little mini run. They got to stop this fold. <laughs> yeah. yeah, wait, are they good? I'm confused. Wait, no, they're not. no, they're not. They're not good. They're not good, but they're very young. <laughs> <laughs> but well, they did. Uh, they did. You know, win last night, so it was good. They're trying. <laughs> they're trying. Hey, did you see that that one point three five billion dollar uh, lotto ticket? It was sold in Maine. Was it your family? Yes. Yes, they won. <laughs> yeah, my mom, she got it. No, I did. The person come forward yet? I don't think. I don't think so. It was that sold would be really soon. It, it was sold in a little gas station just off of the border of uh, Maine and New Hampshire, I guess. But I didn't. I never heard of the town before. Well, those it wasn't called Middleton, Wisconsin, was it? Because I bought <laughs> down there. Uh, Which, no. by the way, you have not paid before yet. Oh, I, I, I don't want any of the losing tickets. I said I'm only paying if I win. <laughs> you know, I, I can't. I, did, I saw you yesterday all day long. I was waiting for you. I say, forgot. Oh, bad, you didn't. Bad, oh. he has $50. Bad, he has $50. But, you know, I, I got to ask you. You know, back, to be fair, you're kind of like Charlie Brown with the football here when you, when you, uh, when you, you know, deal with him. Like, it's kind of your own fault. Sure. Like, I don't want to victim blame, but it's kind of your own fault. <laughs> Hold on. I'll, let me find my Venmo. Venmo. Yeah, sure. Yeah, find your Venmo. Hold yeah, on. Let me see this work out. Siri, what? where is my Venmo? <laughs> where is my vet? My vet? I would have paid you, but my Venmo disappeared. <laughs> my, no, my, thing, my thing in Venmo disappeared. Just keep my swiping. 
I'm you swiping. Can't, I can't find move Venmo. the home screen. Okay. Can I teach you? Can I teach you something? If you just if you just finger down. Nope. And that, and that little <laughs> and that little search bar opens up. And the that's and the too box. advanced. Let's see, Batista. Just finger down. Oh wait, you found your Venmo. Yeah. Yeah, but oh, you know what? In Batista. How about this? I'm I'm on ten Delta that he pays me right now. It, the only Batista in here is Nick Batista. <laughs> <laughs> so I can pay Nick Batista. Do it's it. okay. Don't worry. It's all right. I'd rather you owe it to me. There's like a everything Nick else Batista. There's a Jose Batista. <laughs> There's you type no, in my name. It'll be there. There's no Anthony Batista. Let me try. Uh -huh. You're Anthony. You're watching boomers use technology. <laughs> Are you watching a, a boomer? A boomer. Don't push push us all in there. What's Anthony. wrong, Sasaf? You can't find it on your jitterbug. <laughs> Tom, Tom, Tom! I'm getting the emails from from years gone past when you were going to have a cooking show. Maybe we should live stream the making of the shawarma. This might be nice. I you mean, know I what? think people would rather watch that than the highlights before the Super Bowl. There's a lot of Anthony Batistas in the world. <laughs> Can't you just type in his phone number? Come on. No, I can find the one that's got the 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 one we the, drew the here. Devil horns. The devil yeah, horns. I got the one. I got the one that looks like it's got Tasty Trade branded on it. <laughs> oh, okay. Anthony Batista. It's okay. okay. It's okay. No, 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 no. I'm going to do this, this right. This is painful. I'm going to do this right here because I don't want to be accused of not of. Well, you really only got to give me 33. Uh, no, you're going to get 50. You know why? <laughs> no. Because he loves you. Because I am paying it forward. <laughs> no, you know you are not. <laughs> Yeah, okay, okay, what about me? That's oh, Vanetta, that's that's Vanetta that's underscore Logan. <laughs> this isn't even catching up, okay? This is nothing. This is this is not even interest. All right, payment sent. Some Anthony Batista somewhere that looks like you just got 50 bucks. Now, no, you're right. You, you, you did pay me. I cannot freaking believe wow, it. Look so what I, look what I so now I either have a $17 credit or... I have, well, I'm fully paid with a credit. So next time you buy lottery tickets, you know, you're only out $17. You warmed my black heart. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. I never thought I'd see the day. Wow, technology. Wow, new year, new size. Technology does improve lives. This is good. This is good. Yeah. This is yeah. good. Yeah. 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 More theta. <laughs> hey, uh, we got a great show for you today. A lot of great content headed your way uh, on this wonderful Wednesday at the top of the hour. We're going to do an options jive, earnings overstatement. I never get a bank overstatement, but maybe we'll get an earnings uh, overstatement. Uh, and it is assume the position Wednesday. So we got what's your assumption at 840. Viewers write in with an underlying and a directional bias. And Tom tries to do as many trades as possible in 20 minutes. Uh, we got the geek in the house, the skinny on options math. Jacob is going to talk back of the envelope greeks Ooh, what's your favorite greek my favorite greek and a, cup of caca, cup of <laughs> and a little uh moussaka moussaka mm -hmm. Uh, also, we're going to do live from the Tasty Works trade desk. Scott Sheridan in the house. And a little Nikki Batista is going to be in. Uh, I hope he is invited to your shawarma Super Bowl party. He's going to bring his trade ideas. Uh, but of course, everyone's excited about today. Truth or skepticism, one o'clock. Tom and Dylan. If Nikki, what are you talking if Nikki about? comes to a Super Bowl party with me and Tony, his life is all but over. <laughs> 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 it's the end of his life is it's it's the end of his life as he knows it no you should ask him i think he would go he would go i'm just telling you that's the end of nick batista the the end of the nicky bat um what are you talking about with dylan today on truth or skepticism i don't know they don't tell me anymore they 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 feel <laughs> they feel like i'm better when i'm blindsided mm, mm, so okay. no time to prepare nothing to stay um I don't know. There's not that. There's not a crazy number of topics today. I have some I ideas. I mean, maybe you talk about Davos or something. I don't know. No, Davos is boring. Okay. Well, it's not as riveting as watching you try to learn Venmo. <laughs> hey, 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 
I then mud beautifully this morning. Hey, did you did you hear about the prices in Davos? How they're like, you know, the the sixty dollars salad and a coke, and people are buying sandwiches and eating them in their lap. I mean, from the airport, it's cheaper than going anywhere else. It's crazy. Oh uh, boo hoo! <laughs> <laughs> oh boo hoo! I wonder I'm if uh, Gates and Soros and everybody else can afford the uh, sixty dollars sandwich. I wonder. I wonder. Um, uh, anyway, that's we. That's our show. Uh, great lineup. Uh, like I said, truth or skepticism is going to be great. One o'clock YouTube or here live tastylive dot com. Uh, but hey, in the meantime, in between time, you want your daily dose? Sure. sure. All right. Here is my theme music. Let's go. Our leading in story is breaking news. Breaking news. Coming across the wire. Our this leading story. Just in. Our top story. Our just in. Story. Today's headline. This just Our in. Leading story. Breaking, breaking news. news. Story. All right, all right, everybody. Today is a wonderful Wednesday, it's January the 18th. It's a part of the show we like to call the Daily Dose. We talk about today's financial news and headlines. My name's Vanetta. Are you ready for the news? Sure. Sure. Uh, Mr. Bat earnings for today. Um, AA is gonna is gonna be the only one uh, that that we could talk about. That's Alcoa, uh, not to be confused with American Airlines. Sometimes people do that. Uh, UAL had earnings uh, last night. It's and they were great, right? Uh, it's up about two dollars, uh, right inside the expected move around two dollars and fifty cents. Tom just sold puts because he's magical. Uh, hey, uh, getting to the first story just real fast, breaking news, uh, news out of Bank of Japan. Uh, they're going to, I think, keep interest rates the same or something. And then so the yen is doing things. <laughs> no, actually, actually, the yen well, it's, it, it, hasn't it's even so moved. Huge. What? Oh, okay. And rally back. Yeah, it hasn't moved. My yen position is unchanged this morning. Right, it's only down a, a couple of cents. Seventy-eight right now, point zero zero seven eight. It got all the way down to point zero zero seven six and a half. So it moved another penny and a half lower than this. So, so yesterday, um, some last night, some guy writes me and he goes, "Hey, I'm glad you're okay," and I'm like, "Huh? What happens?" He, he goes, "Well, it, actually, he goes, here's what happened." So he goes, "I was watching Liz and Jenny." And Liz was talking so fast that I set my computer because he's not from this country. And he goes, I set my computer to slow the sound down. Sure, sure. Yeah, to half the speed. No, to three quarters. <laughs> oh, okay. To three quarters. But I forgot to turn it up back. Then I watched you guys and I thought you were having a stroke and Tony he was. He goes, I couldn't figure out what was wrong with you. And I figured I thought you were having a stroke on air. And then and then I was worried about, you know, you and Tony and I, I couldn't figure it out. And then I realized I set the, you know, so the speed. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Another another cool boomer story. Um, <laughs> hey, I'm going to finish my headlines. He does know how to spin a story, doesn't he? Uh, boomer tech support. Hey, getting to my first headline of the day. Silvergate Capital is reporting a net loss of a billion dollars for the fourth quarter. You know what's cool? Losing a billion dollars. Uh, they uh, said that investors were spooked by the collapse of a crypto exchange, FTX, and they pulled out more than $8 billion in deposits in the last three months of 2022 totally ruining their Christmas party. <laughs> no <laughs> Cheers to the bank. How do you lose a billion dollars, though, if... Uh, it's SI, uh, that is the ticket. Yeah, it's, it's $13.20. It, it's been hanging out right here. How do you lose a billion dollars, though, if um, people just take money out? Like, I don't get, you know, I mean, I understand where some of the losses come from, but I don't understand the billion... Like, it, it's just withdrawals, right? So, sure, and I'm sure anyone knows some of them. I'm sure they charge a fee for withdrawing too. I I know what I'm saying is where. Well, I'm saying how do you lose money? Where's the loss? Like in that like that? I understand that the, a lot of people took money out, but I'm not so sure I get why that's a billion dollar loss. Like the billion. Hey, why loss. are you re, why are you recalling your Venmo payment? <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> nice try, Johnny. All right. Ah, the comedy. Ah, the comedy. Hey, in other news, FTX is reporting that um, they are very bad at doing crimes, allegedly. Uh, but they did say that $415 million of the losses actually were hacked. And so, like, they, they totally weren't um, 
you know, uh, responsible for those. Okay, thanks, oh, yeah. bye. Aren't they responsible for those two? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> they said that they've recovered over $5 billion in crypto cash and liquid securities, but significant shortfalls still remain, uh, you know, in order to um, uh, adjudicate the losses of investors. Uh, and FTX did attribute some of that shortfall to hacks, saying $323 million had been hacked from FTX's international exchange and $90 million had been hacked from its U.S. exchange uh, since all, they filed for bankruptcy. But that's their issue as well. I mean, nobody believes anything they say. The I'm hackers, just reporting what I'm reporting. I know, but the <laughs> hackers, they could be the hackers. Right. Well, but they're saying that this is after the the fact. But yeah, I get, I get what you're saying, and I know. I know it's just, it, these are all drops in the bucket. But I do want to talk about Coinbase. What do you want to talk about Coinbase about? Coin Coin's been on a little little bit of a run. It's taking a small breather today, down around 75 cents, but it's up at 53.35. Last week it started, it was around $35. You oh know, my no, goodness. Nobody wanted to talk about Coinbase when it was $32, and I said it's the best trade on the board. Nobody oh, wanted to talk about boy, that. here we go. But at $53, everybody's like, let's talk about Coinbase. I mean, you know, no, the Coinbase is not the store anymore. Coinbase is now fully priced. Let's talk about, you know, let's talk about it again if it gets back to $35. Then it's interesting. All right then. Uh, any I plays in that? Uh, you've been told. Any plays in any of the other digital assets? No, not this morning. Okay. No, nah, get out of here, kid. Get out of here. Hit the bricks. Uh, yeah. Hey, Microsoft is cutting thousands of jobs across multiple divisions. Microsoft announced plans to cut thousands of jobs, with some roles expected to be eliminated in human resources and engineering divisions. The expected layoffs would be the latest in the U.S. tech sector, uh, where companies including Amazon and Meta have announced retrenchment exercises. Um, do, do, do. What are your thoughts on Microsoft? I think every company is overstaffed in HR and, and human resources and all that kind of crap. Do you want to guess how many employees Microsoft has? has? I'm going to guess. I have no clue. I'm going to guess they have 300,000. What do you say, Bat? 350. 221,000. So see, they could hire more. <laughs> <laughs> Microsoft started uh, last week around 220. It's 241. It's up another uh, buck this morning. Street likes it. I'd be ranked at 35, and the earnings coming January 24th. Hey, Carvana, Bat CVNA has adopted a poison pill and is selling $4 billion of auto loans. Uh, they are going to limit shareholders from raising their stakes, and they've reached an agreement to sell $4 billion of auto loans, uh, said the struggling car retailer. The company shares gained uh, in afternoon trade. Ally Bank and Ally Financial will buy the loans, giving Carvana a fresh source of funding as it tries to restructure its operations sounds like they uh sounds like they're supporting their book to me cvna i'm, I'm pretty sure you should stay out of cvna but what it's do i know 20 cents seven dollars and 58 cents it, it rallied from around four and a half to seven and a half it's been going sideways the last three or four days uh earnings not until february 23rd Hey, Elon Musk is being sued over his funding secured tweet. Uh, a four-year-old tweet from Elon Musk has the Tesla CEO back in court starting yesterday. Musk, Tesla, and other Tesla directors are facing a shareholder lawsuit over his now infamous 2018 tweet in which he said he was thinking about taking Tesla private at a price of 420 <laughs> a share. Uh, and uh, if he'd ended the tweet right there, um, there wouldn't still be coverage of it, but then he said funding secured, and then all hell broke loose. Uh, let's talk Tesla. It would have been funnier if a four-year-old was suing him instead of a four-year-old <laughs> tweet. That would have been good. But Tesla up another five bucks this morning. Been on a little bit of a run here, 136, almost 137. Uh, it started, uh, you know, earlier this year around 100. So it's about 30, 40 percent in the last two weeks.
Well, Tesla and other news, uh, news has come out that the video promoting their self-driving feature was staged. This is according to an engineer. He says that the 2016 video that Tesla used to promote its self-driving technology was staged to show capabilities like stopping at a red light and accelerating at a green light that the system at the time did not have. Oh, girl. You know, well, they knew they were going to do it. Yeah. It's funny when you think about Elon and his tweeting, you know, funding secure 420. I would think in court, I think his lawyer should just argue, listen, um, we bought Twitter. We we learned we yeah. learned our lesson about making stupid tweets. You know, right. I mean, that right. cost him forty four billion dollars. So I, you know, at that point, as far as their as far as the um, self-driving thing, that'd be a little uglier for him, I think. Are you back in Tesla? Or do you do you have no pos no Tesla position? No, we have a Tesla position. We are in we we're short um, uh, strangles. Well, we're short some wide strangles, which you know we're going to get hurt a little bit on this morning on the opening because it's up like five bucks. Oh, because it's up too much. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Apple has announced new uh, Mac Minis and new M2 and M2 Pro. Um, the Mac Mini is Apple's next computer to get the bump up to the M2 chip. Uh, it's being offered with the Pro version of the processor well, uh, and they are also announcing two new MacBook Pros. Woo! Uh, what are you guys doing in Apple the Apple? A uh, small position, but um, nothing much. Apple good ID rank of 52. Uh, it does have earnings February 2nd. One thirty. Hey, here's some. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Up a, up a buck. Sorry. Go ahead. That's all right. Uh, here's something interesting for your next cocktail party. In 2022, global smartphone shipments were the lowest in nearly a decade. I guess everyone has a phone. Uh, <laughs> uh, news out of the industry sh is showing slowing figures. The slowing figures actually predated the pandemic, uh, but we're now still seeing the ramifications. Global smartphone shipments fell 17% year on year uh, in Q4 of 2022, and now marking uh, their lowest number in nearly a decade. Hmm. 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 Fancy that. That's all I got. Hmm. Hey, GM has revealed a new Chevy Corvette E-Ray. It's a hybrid sports car that starts at $104,000. The first ever electrified Corvette will be available later this year. The 2024 Chevrolet Corvette E-Ray hybrid will be the quickest production version ever of the American sports car. It's ugly. Okay. <laughs> no, it's not. I think it's really ugly. Oh, it's a good-looking car. You see it on the street. It's a good-looking car. I don't like it. It's a good-looking car. Okay, Matt, I'm not sure what GM's doing. I mean, you can get away with it in Brooklyn. I don't think you can get away with it anywhere else. Wow! 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 Matt, okay. wow. Do you still have those photos? Those photos? Pew, pew, pew. Um, GM, $36 and change. It's up small pennies. It's got earnings January uh, 31st. Um, been on a little tear also ever since this picture was leaked. Looks real nice from 33 to 36. Nice. Hey, want to talk about this? Bat had a good call in this, and that's Roblox. Roblox hit two-month highs yesterday as the gaming platform posted a rise in monthly bookings. Roblox shares finished at their strongest price in more than two months. The 12% rally was sparked by the December bookings report from the online games platform. Um, and the Robux currency also rose by 20% last month. Pretty strong compared to the dollar. <laughs> <laughs> Robo's got earnings up uh, February 21st. I'd be rank at 24, and uh, it looks up small this morning. Well, do you have a position in there, Tom? Yeah, put one on yesterday. It worked out nicely. What did you put on in there? I just sold some, pre sold some premium. It worked oh, out. Nice. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Peloton has hired a former Twitter executive as the new head of marketing. To a, mm, Peloton has hired Leslie Berland to serve as its new chief marketing officer, effective today. Uh, former CMO left the company in a broader executive exodus, that's fun to say, in September. Uh, stock Peloton. Um... Let's talk Peton. Uh, Is there anything to talk about Peton? Yeah. I mean, uh, 
it's twelve dollars. It certainly rallied uh, from eight or so. It's been on a it's been a tear from eight to twelve. But I mean, it's a far cry from its forty dollar price it once was. Yeah, I mean, it's been on a great rally, but you know, again, there's not much to do on a ten dollar stock. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Twitter is now selling one year of its blue check privileges at a discounted rate. It's cute, guys. It's already on sale. Twitter needs the cash. Not only are they selling their espresso machines, uh, but the blue package per month would cost you $96. But Twitter says, hey, 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 give us $84. We'll call it even. <laughs> 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 oh twitter i hope twitter makes it but it's they really need money you guys <laughs> they need I'm, the money i'm not making any of this up like i like i'm not even trying to be funny i mean i'm naturally funny but i know like, this is this is what's going on in twitter man it's not it's not great makes me sad yeah. hey a u.s court uh, the U.S., I'm sorry, is asking of the court to reverse an order banning airplane mask mandates to combat COVID. Uh, the Justice Department asked an appeals court panel to reverse an April 2021 ruling that declared unlawful a government order requiring masks on public transportation, like airplanes, buses, trains, ride-sharing services, and at airports and other transportation hubs. Uh, the three-judge panel of the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals heard arguments on the government's appeal of the ruling oh mass might be coming back you guys I'd, uh, I'd be all for it for on airplanes on planes yeah i don't mind it uh not only the mass coming back the market's coming back even the sfps after retail sales come out are up 17 bonds are up a point 18 to 131.09 um that's about as high as i've seen them since uh early december oh Hey, speaking of mask mandates coming back, Moderna says that its RSV vaccine trial was a success. Moderna announced strong results from a large trial of its respiratory syncytial virus vaccine. <laughs> Adding new just drama. Stick it in my testicular. Syncytial RSV, just RSV for short. Uh, there's a battle of the biopharmaceutical titans as Pfizer and GSK also launch to com uh, launch competing jabs. mRNA please uh two, 205 and change uh it is up about 15 bucks this morning uh really helping You're welcome <laughs> back back to levels that had, hadn't seen since early december also it's been on a been on quite a tear from 170 to now two 205 up about 15 bucks do you have a position in moderna tom no because the ivy rank was so low that we took it off it saved us ah. some 0 0.5 it closed at just about one ivy rank uh yeah yeah I mean, have you ever seen that that's crazy it's a perfect example of where ivy rank saved the good kids mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that is that is good that is that that's why we do the sps are up five now just to uh to put that in they have to speed up 15 a moment ago. Hey, now DoorDash will deliver Starbucks across the U.S. You'll be able to order Starbucks through the DoorDash app at more locations starting in March. DoorDash will soon start delivering Starbucks food and drinks in all 50 states, the company announced. Uh, through the partnership, users can place orders with the DoorDash app instead of the Starbucks app. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Starbucks says it'll make about 95% of its core menu available through the service. Let's talk Starbucks. Um, Starbucks? We really don't have anything on in there. Okay. Um, no, we really don't. Um, but it's also been on a really nice run. I mean, listen, it started the summer around 72 bucks. It's 107 right now. Um, Starbucks uh, Ivy rank at 26 as earnings February 7th. Okay. Good, good to know. Hey, soon you'll be able to watch your favorite out-of-town team in your own market, hopefully. Uh, inexplicably, I've never understood this about Major League Baseball. I'm like, if they're trying to grow the sport, like if you live in Iowa, you can't watch the Brewers, you can't watch the White Sox, you can't watch the Cubs, you can't watch, like, Kansas City. Like, I just never understood, like, you're trying to get people into baseball, but you won't let people watch baseball. But I think it looks like they're going to try to switch that up with the, their MLB.TV streaming service and will allow fans uh, to watch uh, or more local uh, stations, too, will be able to 
show out of market games, but good. Yeah, um, why not? But sure. do you, is it too little, too late though to save Major League Baseball though? The um, game can't be saved. Like just is in be. like like here's you know they're trying to bring in like robot umpires and the shift rule change and you know stuff like that, but like. I mean, you know, baseball is the American pastime, but it would be nice if they figured out a way to make baseball faster. We don't, you know, it's still a three and a half hour, you know, it, it, between going to the game and everything, it's it's worse than a round of golf. <laughs> Here's what I suggest. Uh, the eighth inning, the team that's behind has to go shirtless. Huh? Huh? I mean, <laughs> I liked it when they play like... When they, they get the girls and the gays. <laughs> When they play double headers, they only go seven innings. Or now that they have like the runner on second base, when you go extra innings, I mean, whatever. All those things are good changes just to make the game go faster. They should juice the balls again. Like that's really what's like what people want to see. Of You're course, right. of course. They should allow steroids. <laughs> of course, let them play. And shirtless eighth inning. I think I'm on to something. <laughs> <laughs> got something. Looking at you, Mike Trout. Um, hey, sad news to report. Uh, leg legendary Olympic winning record breaking icon Usain Bolt reportedly lost millions of dollars in a $1.2 billion Jamaican wealth management fund uh, fraud. Usain Bolt, the legendary sprinter, was reportedly caught up in a massive employee, employee fraud scheme where they were just siphoning funds, uh, uh, money from the fund, uh, stealing over $1.2 two billion dollars uh for, from a wealth management company like he was doing everything right like he had his money in a wealth management fund and then someone stole all the money so no one cares about this no i mean it's a bad situation but i i, I you know again i don't know what to say there's been a lot of people lost a lot of money in that jamaican wealth management fund and they probably knew the guys that were running it yeah, I mean it's horrible though. For any fraud is fraud. I yeah, mean, I mean he lost whatever whatever he lost, but I mean I mean they they clean. He lost people. ten million in uh, of the one. Yeah, I think he lost like ten yeah, million dollars. But I mean uh, people lost you know a billion two in there. That's a crazy number. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, it's a it's a lot, especially yeah. yeah. For, well, you know it's it's no. F I mean I don't know I don't know I don't know the details, but if you're investing in a fund that's a one point two billion dollar fund, you, you kind of did everything you needed to do you know what i mean like it's not like he invested in uh you know his friend jimmy's you know food business you know sure i so. mean yeah it's a i mean the problem with the the problem with non-listed markets and funds and we talk about this all the time in fact if you read the 10 questions to ask your advisor you know on the managed stuff it it is unless you're dealing with somebody that you know is that you know is really reputable that you know is real and everything else it is very hard in the non-listed space you know that's why we're doing part of my speech on the bad trader tours just talking about all the times you know like you know i made investments that were highly recommended that that the company wasn't even didn't even exist right <laughs> you know i had it i know right right yeah uh, well, finally, today for the viral video of the day, uh, every dog owner knows that a good couple of good commands are, you know, sit, uh, uh, paw, lay down, leave it. Uh, you know, trying to teach your dog leave it is a very, uh, you know, important We like task. to say drop it. Drop it, leave it, like whatever. Because in, in the city, you don't know, you don't know what your dog's going to pick up. Uh, but this, I've never seen this before. Uh, watch this. No, 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 Munchie! Munchie! Munchie, Munch. come on. Come on, Munch. Munchie. It's a good name for a dog. Munchie? Yeah. Oh, we got a lizard. Yeah. Munchie's very proud of himself right there. He loves them. He loves them. No, he just caught him. Drop him. Hey, Munch. It's as big as him. Leave it. Munchie, leave it. Leave it. Munchie, leave him. Uh-uh. 
Drop him. Let's go. <laughs> that was pretty good. Yikes. It's hard Yikes. to catch those lizards. Like you, <laughs> how many of you caught in your day? I wouldn't even go near that lizard, let alone catch that lizard. And by the way, Vanetta, those are all the commands we use with Tony every day. <laughs> See, that was good. That was That's good. good. Hey, bet you still got those photos? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just getting close to Drop being it. Out there. Sit. Drop Leave it. it. Don't touch that. Leave it. <laughs> Leave it. Not yet. Wait. Stay. Sit. <laughs> Stop licking yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, hey, right, enough. Time. Enough out of you two. Let's take a quick 90 second break and come back. We got some more confirm and send next. This is Tasty Live.
Thomas Thomas, we're back, my friend. You know what that means. Time for a little bit more Tasty Live with this Confirm and Send. Before we do, you want to take a quick look at what's going on in the market? Sure. We had a little bit of movement so far. I actually thought we'd be a little bit weaker Me? Uh, this morning. Me too. Just oh, you did. Okay. Just because of what's been going on with the market, kind of strength and a little bit of sideways here. Even the S&P's up 11. They were down around 8 uh, for a short period of time last night. They've rallied. Um, they're about 10 handles off of their highs uh, after retail sales came out. NASDAQ up 61, Russell up five. The Dow was actually uh, red uh, just a moment ago. It's up 49. Volatility's in by 30 cents. Um, UAL, which had earnings, uh, is up to 53.35. You can see UAL having a nice run from 37 uh, all the way to 53 and change where it is right now. You could sell. You could sell the opening in there today. Oh, okay. I okay. was I was waiting. Um, I thought, you know, I thought after that, usually I would fade that move last night, but I waited till this morning because I thought they could get good earnings. And I think you fade the opening today. And you, you, and you sold puts yesterday, puts are schmutz. Puts are schmutz in there. But UAL, um, actually, let's do this right now because I feel this is how I get myself in trouble, by the way. It does have a low IV rank of 11. I mean, Mark is not open yet, but still. I sold some stock at uh, 53.30. And, Beautiful. Um, yeah, I think I'd get short on the opening in there. Oh, you could pick up a dime right now, nine cents. I don't pick up dimes, okay? I, it's hard for me to bend over now. So I got it. <laughs> That's what she said. Bonds, <laughs> bonds, tw I'm sorry, Bitcoin, 21,400. Oil up a dollar 48. Bitcoin and oil both catching a little bit of a bid. Gold after being down yesterday, uh, catching a bid also. Net gas after being up yesterday is down today. Man, everything's going two sided except the market, which is on a little bit of a meteoric run. That's all I got. Yeah, I sold some S&Ps and some NASDAQ just a minute ago. I'm going to sell some more, too. I think they're going to be range-bound today. And today is the day I think you can sell the opening. But we'll see. Um, Beautiful. I'm just nibbling anyway. I'm a little tiny. I understand. A little, just a little, 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 little just, tiny bit short here. You're just a trader looking for his nut. That's right. Um, I'm Tommy's Tony. It's eight, uh, 749. We're Chicago Bay, so it's central time here. Let's do it. Let's see what we got. Confirm and send. Got it. Emails that came into us overnight from viewers everywhere. Uh, this person writes, I was wondering what you think the proper equity options, futures options, like portfolio allocation would be for someone with a 250 to 500 K in taxable, um, in taxable and tax free deferred accounts combined. So he's talking about regular margin and IRA accounts combined between 250 and 500. After learning more from Tasty, I've been leaning towards wheel strategies on ETFs in tax advantage accounts and more straight options and dividend wheels in my taxable account. What do you think? Uh, I think you're really over, I think you're really overthinking it a little bit. I don't have any problem with any of it. When he says the wheel strategy, and ETFs, I believe he's just selling puts, getting put stock, and then selling calls. And um, in the tax deferred account, or the or the or the tax, I'm sorry, the tax advantage accounts would be like IRA. He's getting the dividend, so he doesn't have to pay the taxes on the dividend. I mean, I, I don't have any problem with what you're doing, um, but you are straight bullish on all the accounts, from what I can yeah. read. So what I wrote back is, here's the cool thing about Tasty. And, you know, I do this when I'm doing, like, certain kinds of webinars and seminars, things like that. I always explain it this way. It's our job as a broker right now. I'm not talking about as, as a content creator network, that kind of thing. But it's our role in the industry um, to create what we, what we call financial opportunity via strategy. Um, we want individuals, self-directed individuals, to do whatever it is that they want to do, um, regardless of the underlying, doesn't matter to us, or the strategy or anything else. We want individuals to be able to facilitate opportunity anywhere, any account type, anywhere. So we're indifferent to product and we're indifferent to strategy. We just understand that it's important to optimize both. It's important to optimize the number of underlines. It's important to optimize the number of trades. It's important to optimize the number of strategies that you use. So 
this would be fine. Um, you know, I mean, we'd like to see you mix up equity, um, equities, equity options, index options, futures options, all of the above. We'd love to see you mix and match all that stuff. But for someone with 250 to 500 in taxable, in, in basically in margin and in IRA accounts, um, sure, if you, if you, like, if you like, like to lean long, and you want to do a wheel strategy where you start off with short puts, and if you, if you just either take profits on your short puts or you get put the stock, and then you sell calls against it, we're fine in any sure. account type. Okay, we might be a little more aggressive in the in the margin account than in the the retirement account, but um, we're fine in any. We don't care what the account type is. We really don't. It doesn't make a difference to us. Account type strategy underlying. What you want to do here, perfect. It's what we built Tasty for, for, for some people. Yep. And, you know, that's perfect. Hey, I mean, all the positions that he's talking about there have a higher pop than 50-50, probably closer to 60 to 70%. I'm into it. It's just all one directional, which is also fine. Yeah, totally fine. Like, yeah. Again, we are the facilitators of opportunity. No, that's it. Um, and, and when I wrote the cherry bomb yesterday talking about what you know, like what Goldman does and stuff like that. The reason I, I was so rough on them and picked on them is because that's not what they do. Right. You know, like that's not the, in their game plan. The reason I, that certain platforms, you know, like like Robinhood being one of them, even though I'm, I've, I've, I've owned some of the stock, one of the reasons that I don't like what they do is because I don't believe that they are true facilitators of opportunity. I don't like the way, you know, like, like E-Trade or Schwab or Fidelity, you know, facilitates opportunity for individual investors either because they don't truly give you the ability to do anything you want to do in any account type and include all products and strategies. Therefore, to me, they're they're not, you know, they're, they're dead to me. Well, they're, well, they've been dead to me for a long time, but but to me, they're not, you know, that's not what a really good firm should do. Now, I've used that argument, too, when they rate different brokerage firms, and I've had, you know, barons tell me that I'm, um, I'm on crack. But sure. I, they're on crack. They don't understand it. No, you're on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's go to the next slide. With the market up moves, I've built up a lot of negative deltas. I've built up negative deltas. Deltas are in the normal range, but the upper end of the minus 200 per 100, per 100K in net lick. And I'm at 45% buying power, so I don't have enough room to put on more long delta option positions. I'm torn between neutralizing the deltas with forward slash MES, those are the micro ESs, or just leaving it alone and keeping up with the mechanical adjustments in my existing positions. Is there a best practice here? I, I would I would keep with your doing and, and adjust the existing positions, which which you know uses no additional buying power or significantly small amount of, of buying power. That's what I would be doing. Yeah. I don't think I'd be neutralizing it with MES, but you certainly could if you wanted to. Yeah, so... I don't want to tell you what I would do. Exactly. So um, I'm in the same camp as, as Tony here. I'm not, I'm not neutralizing those positions using MES either. I mean, my objective... If I'm in your situation right here, I am rolling up, taking my existing positions, being mechanical and rolling them up and making my adjustments there, not using any additional capital. The best practice is to adjust the existing positions. Agreed. That's best practice. Yep. Let's go to the next slide. In a low vol environment, if I'm super wide at an iron condor, and still manage to collect one third the width of the strikes at 45 DTE. Is that is that a good trade? So I'm uh, kind of still able to. Uh, it'll it'll be a trade that has a 65 percent pop or greater, probably. Yeah, I'm all for it. As long as the IBR is decent, sure. The low vol environment doesn't mean anything to us. It's it's more of the IBR. So where yeah, is that underlying relative that. Mm -hmm. relative to itself? If the IBR is high, sure. I yep. mean, of course. Yep. You yeah. know, it's, it's totally fine. We we don't we don't try to judge. Um, you know, sometimes you're going to be a low vol environment. Sometimes you're going to be in a high vol environment. But we want the stocks that are in or the underlyings in that environment to be high relative to themselves, or as best you can find. Yep. Let's go to the next slide. I know that Tastyworks does not have the ability to calculate portfolio correlation at this at, at this time. 
and that this figure must be manually calculated or done outside the platform. If I were able to determine my portfolio correlation on my own, in your opinion, what would be a good target to aim for? Um, uh, correlation on your own. What would be a good target? To, I mean, whatever matches, you know, like what, what do you think the market's going to do? I mean, is that, I mean. No, I think the answer here is in a perfect world, um, in a perfect world, you'd like the correlation to be zero. Okay, I mean, there's sure, no. Sure, if you want to be delta neutral, which is yeah, correlation. No, 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 I'm not talking about delta neutral. I'm talking about um, correlation neutral. If you want, if you want your portfolio to have truly zero core, you know, no correlation risk, then your correlation would be zero. But that's not realistic. So this person is asking, what would a good target to aim for? And what I wrote back to him was, I would aim for something around 0.3, under 0.3 or under 0.35. So like anything over 0.5 has a pretty decent correlation for a portfolio, but 0 0.3, 0 0.35, 0 0.25 in that range, you know, that's close enough. But I mean, obviously closest to zero. Sure, sure. But 0 0.3, 0 0.35 in that range. Uh, let's go to the next one. So what do you think drives the activity and interest in Bitcoin? Its recent rally hasn't come to any good news, so I'm wondering what you think the catalyst may be. Asymmetric opportunity. You're damn freaking straight, okay? I mean, go ahead, though. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know, the perceived value of it and, and probably the perceived velocity of the move, too. If you're looking for something that has had um, a lot of velocity to it, to both sides of the market, you know, Bitcoin is one of the one of those products, and maybe as it matures, that velocity is a little more muted, um, but it's still there. Price um, is the only thing. Okay, so um, first of all, the the best time to do something. The, the, first, don't try to. There is no reason why things happen, all right? We've talked about this a gazillion times. I mean, te Tesla being a perfect example here, the stock is rallying on them lowering the price of their cars. That's when you would think they would sell it off, but they sold it off in anticipation. Markets are just very, um, they, they, they can see the future better than you can. And so people trade emotionally based on what they hear today, and it's usually wrong at that particular moment. Mm -hmm. So what drives the interest and in activity in Bitcoin? Um, all you need is what, you know, there was a, so much negative sentiment in cryptocurrencies. I mean, I'll tell you why I wrote the whole story about why I thought Bitcoin had, had, you know, asymmetric upside, um, was simply because they've been trying to kill digital assets now for the last year, every yeah. single bit of bad news from corrupt companies to fraud, to scam after scam, to hacking. And you couldn't hurt it. It got to a level where it was like, hey, you know what? Nothing bothers us anymore. Right. And as soon as as soon as the first buyer stepped in, just thinking, hey, maybe we can make something happen, uh, the thing rallied 25%. Right. You know, in like a week. Um, it, no real rally should come on good news. The mm -hmm. worst time, good news will be the top in Bitcoin. So you don't want any good news. If you're a Bitcoin bull, you don't want any good news. You yeah, want the it catalyst. like it. Yeah, you want the catalyst to be, nobody to be able to figure out what the catalyst is. Let's go to the next slide. Last one. So with a strangle, do you wait to be breached before making your adjustments to the untested side? And if not, when do you start adjusting? All right, so the key here is to be, um, is to be mechanical and consistent. So, so for me, we've done a lot of research on this, whether it breached or a, a, a delta that makes you comfortable. I mean, for me, I prefer to adjust a little bit more often, somewhere when my delta gets to be around 15 to 25 delta at the most. That's usually when I roll up the untested side on a strangle and I want to be neutral on a product. I've seen other people, we've done research on it, when it, bre when it breaches the untested side. I think there's a small statistical edge to being a little bit more aggressive with your with your roles, especially if you're only reducing delta by 50%. But the whole key here, do something and be consistent. Yeah, I, so first of all, I, 
A, I do not wait to be breached. I think that's waiting too long. I think we used to say to people, um, hey, we wait to be breached, but you know what? That that wasn't, that's not good because I, I don't think we wait to be breached. Um, I think we adjust a lot earlier. So I tend to make adjustments to the untested side as soon as my deltas get out of, um, like out of whack a little bit. So if I start off short, let's say 216 delta options, and one of them goes to 30, and the other one goes to 10, then you're, immediately- you're right in the middle of my range, yeah. Immediately, right. I'm gonna take that 10 up to a, get about 20, at least. Mm -hmm. So I, I'll start adjusting as early as 25 or 30 deltas on the, on the, on the tested side. And if the untested the side untested gets- untested side. No of the, as soon as the tested side gets to, you know, 25, 30 or 35 deltas, I will start to, um, you know, get, get, start to make adjustments. That means the untested side will be down around, probably around 10 or something, and then I'll immediately jump, bump that up to like 20 or 25. So I start adjusting very early, way earlier, way, way, way before um, you breach the strike. If you haven't done anything by the time you've been breached, you 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 missed the position is really what happens yep, for you. I think so. Let's take a quick 90 second break and come back. We've got an option jive next. It's Tasty Live.
Tomas, Tomas, we're back, my friend. And you know what that means. Time for a little more Tasty Live with this um, option jive. Yeah, we're getting up to those levels, Bad, I thought we could get to that uh, maybe they 4, get 4,030 on the E-mini S&P yeah, is just may, under. Maybe they get to 4,050, but I think that 4,030 to 4,040 range is going to be pretty, pretty damn good. Yesterday you had volatility staying bid, and I kind of agree with you. Today you got volatility uh, contracting a little bit, leading itself uh, to to the, to the upside. You also got bonds up a full two points, uh, one thirty, almost two points, you know, helping that rally too. I don't see anything uh, being a bucker right here of this up move. Um, I don't see a bucker myself. Um... I'm debating what to do in. Uh, um... Oh, you had to do that now while I'm talking, so I can explain to everybody how you just took a good fifty cents on a nice trade in, in UAL. Oh, who sells the top? Only my man Tommy Boy. A little pre-market scalping. That's yeah, all. a little pre-market appetizer. Appetizer. Yeah, bonds. How? Will... Nice scalp. You're back, my man. You're back. Mm, not really. I don't know what to do here in bonds. I've been chasing all morning. Yeah, bonds, don't like uh, doing it. Do IV not. Rank is, is relatively high at 31. Also, I know, but uh, this has been a tough rally here to this level. Mm -hmm. um, there is not much the good kids can do here, except yep, yep. Uh, choke a little bit. <laughs> yeah, choking a little tiny bit on bonds here. I can. I'm debating on whether or not to sell them. In, I mean, roll up puts in the hole here. I think I'm going to have to. <laughs> I think I have to. I think I'm going to have to. What is it? 810 on January 18th. I can't believe it's the middle of freaking January. Do you know it's like 40 degrees in Chicago? We've had uh, one. It's 36 and cloudy right now. Yes. All right. Well, it was 50 yesterday. I don't know if it got up to 50, but sure. It was, it was 50 like at midnight. And then it went down to 40 for the rest of the day. Okay. Ruin, yeah. ruin all the fun. But uh, <laughs> all I like know is. Blanket. All I know is. I'm not shoveling right now. No, and, you're not. No, you're not. And you haven't all year. Oh, uh, it snowed one time. Well, you didn't. No, I didn't snow. I got a guy. I, I finally got a guy. And he's good. And he, uh, and, and um, so he runs his car wash. I told you, he runs his car wash. And so he, so I went in there the other day and he said, and he go, I go, you know, he, he shoveled once for me. He goes, yeah, I know. He goes, I was going to settle up monthly because I thought we'd be get, I thought we'd be actually doing some work. But the way it's going right now, he goes, let's just settle up at the end of the year. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, sure, whatever you want. Nice. Best car wash in the city. So um, anyway, let's do it. Let's see what we got. I'm ready. Option jive. Earnings overstatement. Now, before we get into this, I just have to explain. Let me explain. Yesterday, we did a segment on earnings um, outliers, and it was very interesting the, that um, the results showed, and we only looked at, uh, was it six stocks yesterday? Yes, it was a, okay. a limited amount. This is earnings season, so we, I think we looked at six stocks. And what we found on the six stocks is that, um, is that in under normal circumstances, um, under normal circumstances, you know, like if we looked at everything every single day, the the market on a sixty eight percent probability of profit trade, like selling a a one a one standard deviation strangle, mm -hmm. you will end up with a right around somewhere between eighty to seventy nine on the low depend, on, on these six stocks, seventy nine percent rate of success or to an eighty two percent rate of success, and. But the outlier moves were were um, were very muted. There wasn't a lot of outlier moves. It was right in line. Like yeah. your 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 top level was eighty percent. Your next level, you know, the next one or two times, you know, outside the expected range was was something like, you know, fourteen or fifteen percent. Then it went down to three percent. Then it was essentially zero. You know, mm -hmm. exactly the way it sh exactly the way it should. The be. math model would have worked. Yeah, close enough. So then. We went out and we looked at earnings trades on these same six stocks. And we, we found is that the 
amount of outliers goes up dramatically at every single level. But even like the really far outliers, like the the three and four standard deviation moves, that's where the where the pain is mostly inflicted. That's the stuff that doesn't show up on like the study that we're about to do, and that's where that's that's where most of the damage is done on earnings trades. But we decided to go one step further today and to look at earnings overstatement in the whole S&P because what we're going to show you is a little bit about how you can make the numbers sometimes a little more misleading. <laughs> you know, like by looking at the whole market and smoothing everything out, the numbers can be a little bit misleading. When you look at individual stocks, you can see, hey, you know what, there's some outlier risk here. Mm -hmm. And when you look mm -hmm. at the overall picture, it's like, oh, this looks pretty good. Let me right. show you. We're going to show you. It's pretty interesting. We did this on purpose to, to compliment yesterday so you can kind of get a feel. Like, this is one of the coolest things we do at Tasty is, you know, like, we'll challenge our own research to give you different angles. Um, let's go to the first slide, John. We found that overall, the VIX hasn't been higher during earnings than non-earning seasons. This was a piece of research we did months ago, and you can see there that the average VIX is 19, during earnings seasons it stays at 19, and the median stays about the same. This was just, we were talking about like, you know, what do you change during, during, during the earnings cycle? But let's go to the next slide. But earnings offer a high risk, high reward um, trade due to a sharp change in IV before and after earnings. So this past season, as with many, we've seen some significant moves. Do these earnings moves, so have these earnings moves been outside of the expected range? Now, when we looked at individual stocks, we found that, you know, a couple of them, more have been outside, more have been outside than, than normally, okay? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. again, outside the range is a little misleading because some have been way outside the range. Okay, yeah. that, that doesn't count. And when you look at it just outside the range, but let's go to the next slide. So to understand that we tested every single company in the S&P, the NASDAQ, the Dow, and the Russell. Like, this is like 4,000. I don't know exactly. How many is it, bad total? Do you know? Oof. Let's try to find out I, for I you. I think it's I'd... like three or 4,000 companies. I'm not sure the exact number. Well, but it's, five or three it's a lot yeah. more. It's, what is it? Got to be close to 4,000 or a okay. little bit more. Yeah. I'm it, just it used... 500,000, 30. Yeah. At one point, yeah. there was like 7,000 companies, but now I think yeah. it's down to 4,000. Yeah. Um, so we analyzed the one-day move after earnings. Yesterday, we looked at two-day moves, almost same thing. And we looked at the actual versus expected 30-day moves. And obviously, after 30 days, it's going to smooth out a little bit. Let's go to the next slide. So first, the stock indices tend not to react too much on earnings season. We, this, this, now, again, this is for 2022, and this is, we, we, we had it down here. So during earnings season, most of the indices were down, um, but that's because the market was down last year significantly. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the next slide. Second, of all the tested companies, the average one-day move after the announcement was down 0.36. Okay, the average one-day move was down 0.36. This is this is for 2022. All right, we just looked at last year, which was a down year, with almost a 50-50 split of positive and negative returns. So the 50-50 split of positive and negative returns can mess you up a little bit because you're sitting there going, oh, well, it's 50%, you know, it's a 50-50 shot, which it is. Uh -huh. And and the, the, the negative down move is only 0.36, which is well within the normal um, expectation of a one-day range. OK, um, and that's with the outliers built into it in both directions. So you look at this, you're like, OK, you know, I can deal with that risk. That's pretty good. Let's go next slide. But lastly, the majority of earnings moves were smaller than expected last year, with the average overstatement being 3.7, slightly lower than the year before, which was 4.0. Now, we've effectively left out of this are the outliers. The number of outliers last year where the move was supposed to be under 1%, but was actually over 3 or 4%, was up by 300%. I know it's, I'm giving a little contrasting views, yeah, but, yeah, a little bit, but right. I think it's important that you recognize that. That's where the burn comes from. 
that's where that's where the I mean, if you looked at this, you'd say I just just fire away. There's no risk. Right. Because you got right. heightened volatility, you got extra credit. But the the reason was that the outlier moves, the worst of the one percent, were up like three hundred percent. Got it. Got it. Got it. Let's Excuse go doing all the rest of the numbers. Yeah, we just didn't put it in this particular study because mm -hmm. they didn't study for outliers. So mm -hmm. For stocks in the S&P, the percentage of earning moves that were overstated was 75%, which is consistent with the percentage of outstated moves for the past five years, which was 77%, which, again, makes total sense because that is in line with everything that we found in our, stud in, in our studies of just a couple of stocks, but, again, not, not including the, the huge outliers. So of all tested stocks in the S&P, the percent overstated was about 75% for earnings. That, again, the percent overstated for non-earnings is a little closer to 80, but it's still good. No, it's real good. Let's go to the last slide. <clears throat> so the takeaways, individual stock volatility increases, nor, um, normally increases during earnings season, but the indices tend not to react too much. So selling implied volatility during earnings season is still a great engagement strategy, considering that 75% of the underlings overstated their earnings moves. Now, there needs to be an asterisk here, and the asterisk is saying that, yes, that all that is true, but last year there was almost a 300% increase in outlier moves, you know, in that 1% range. And sure. one of those moves can turn the earnings season into, into something dark. So how do you protect yourself against it? Like, like we saw in Netflix last year, right? Like we saw in Netflix, like we saw in Meta, like we saw in Target. And right. how do you protect yourself against you stay small? I mean, you got to stay small, right? Yep. You stay small. Awesome. Let's take a quick 90-second break and come back. Got more Tasty Live with the opening bell next. This Tasty Live.
Six and a half minutes, Thomas. I'm so ready. So far, you've got good. I'm ready. I know, I know you are, but you're gonna have to wait. Sit tight. You've already scalped UAL a couple of oh, times. Oh, please stop yourself. Um, like, I like think sogging up of old. I think you got to sell UAL on the opening. Um, you sold it pre-market too. I know. I think I sell UAL today, just because I think that that's going to be the high, and I also think that um, you can sell S and P's here. Uh, even the S and P's were just up sixteen. They're up thirteen now, trading uh, forty twenty three. They got up to forty thirty two. Yeah, I sold some. Sold some too low. I sold some S and P's. I sold some at forty twenty seven. Which was the good sale, but then I also sold them at forty twenty two. All right, well you sold them right here then. Yeah, actually right here. Yeah. Yeah. Nasdaq up seventy seven on a percentage basis. Uh, the leader in the clubhouse, I think Tesla helping that out a lot. Uh, Tesla uh, one thirty. Let's just round up. Say one thirty seven uh, up just about. Uh, uh, six bucks or so, five and a half dollars uh, on Tesla after a nice little run it's had over the last couple of days. Put a little bit of thorn in my side uh, from the lows it made it down at 104, which it had made pre market uh, lows at 102 here, but it made pre market 104, came back down there in the inter in the session, and now it's 136 and change. Tesla on a nice big run. Yeah, I'm not quite ready to get short Tesla, but it's getting frothy. I'm getting a little short by default here. Head on a nice yeah. strangle. That, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to roll I'm, down, roll down, roll down. I'm rolling up, rolling up, rolling up. Amazon, yeah. which was down yesterday, uh, being a bucker to the overall market, um, is up about a buck and a half today uh, to 97 and a quarter. Uh, Coinbase, which has been on a little bit of a, of a rally, uh, unchanged up a dime right now. Uh, Apple, something we don't, uh, we haven't talked too much about. Uh, but Apple 137 up a dollar or so. So you've got everything, um, at least the stuff that we look at in the NASDAQ, are all uh, going in the same direction. Yeah. 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 We're, the yen has and moved. Got, and then you got bonds up full two point and change. I mean, that's a I know. big move in bonds. I mean, they bonds just took go some... higher, rates go lower, or do I have that wrong? You just took some money. They just took some money from me. Not happy about it. I mean, I can't, I could handle, the other day, I was really good at 127, 128, but at 132, uh-uh. And your yen has rallied, uh, too. You, your your yeah. at, yen is actually green right now, nicely green, too. Yeah, the yen turned around our way, but bonds turned the other way, so. All it, currencies have. Euro's, uh, Euro's up, the, the pound is up, it's all up. Pound's up big, 124 and change. Uh, that's about the highest that's traded. And actually, our euro position, we are going to have to uh, adjust this one. Not... Roll up some putty, putty, putty here, putty, putty, putty. Just rolled up some here, putty, putties. Uh -huh. um, yeah, the euro, I did not think we'd be seeing close to over 109 again. They did not look too good two days ago. 109, 125. Oh, euro, you said. I'm sorry. I was looking at the pound. Yeah. I'm sorry. My bad. My bad. Yeah. No, I'm ready. I'm ready today. Um, Are you excited? Uh, you know, I'm going to be a little. You were I'm, completely flat coming in. Yeah, I'm going to be a little short here because I've leaned a little short um, this morning, selling some futures and and uh, just thought that this market may have run its course. I don't really know, but we'll see. I got some UAL to buy on the op UAL puts to buy on the opening. I've got some Tesla that's going to I'm going to have to roll up puts there. And I don't like rolling up Tesla here. I kind of think I might be rolling at the high of the day. Uh, I thought that yesterday, too. Me, too. So. And that's why I just do it anyway, just because right. you, it's part of the program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you it's can't. self-help group. You can't overthink it. You just got to yep. just freaking do it as much as you hate it. Yep, totally agree. Totally agree. I'm trying to look around, like, what else in the NASDAQ here is is moving higher. I can't really find oh, too it's, much. It's, I mean, it's pretty... Microsoft's up a buck and a half. Yeah, it's pretty much across the board, you know. Yeah, Netflix is unchanged that I see. I don't know, I'm just taking, taking a look at positions you have. NVIDIA's yeah. uh, unchanged. I don't know. Yeah. Listen, I'm, yeah. Not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I wasn't that short, so I'll be fine. But Right, right, right. Oh, I get it. I get it. Yeah. 
I'm ready though. I'm for some reason I'm ready for a little bit of action today. It was a little slower. C T I O N. It was a little slower yesterday. Was there earnings tonight? Just because uh, just so I know if, what to look at. A A. A A Alcoa. Yeah, that is correct. Hey, Alcoa is a fifty-six dollar stock. I mean, it's not like which it's, is shocking uh, because a couple of days ago I felt it was thirty-six or thirty-eight. It's had you a monster. Weren't, you weren't yeah. too far off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's had a monster move. I um, rank a seven, though. That's the problem. Yeah, and Alcoa is a what we call an earnings mover. It didn't used to be, but since it did its splits and all this other stuff, sure. you, know, you can easily get. We had a couple of moves last year outside of the expected range, pretty significantly. So I would be just a little bit cautious in, you know, if you're going to do Alcoa. Um, well, I mean, it's basically it's a metals play, so <laughs> you know. I mean, Thanks, Mr. Obvious. Really appreciate that. I'll probably sell a few puts in there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. How about you? Thank you, Captain Obvious. <laughs> Thank you, Captain Obvious. Is right. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Captain Obvious. Um, Less than a minute. Even S and P's uh, up thirteen. Place all bets. Place all bets. No more bets. No more bets. Wheels going round. Wheels going round. Uh, the wheels on the bus. I'm going to have to. Um, I was doing more of like a roulette wheel, but you're doing a roulette wheel. I was thinking. <clears throat> well, they definitely didn't open them as low as I thought they would. And they didn't open UAL up around 30, which is where I wanted them to. It uh, looks like they opened UAL around 53. Um, uh, uh, what, do you, what do you mean by 30? I wanted to open them 53.30. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. No, no. 53.10. Uh, it's 52 to 80 right now. Yeah. Um, just buying back my short puts in there. Um, uh, yeah, those were from uh, February with uh, 30 days to go. Yeah, we sold them at 72 cents and they bought them back at uh, 36. 36. That is a 50%, Mr. Batista. On the number. <laughs> Even the SP is up 16. UAL uh, uh, back to 5280. It was just 5320 a moment ago. Yeah. Um, Uh, yeah, we're just buying a little crap in there that we just uh, sold pre-market. 52.74, another scalpy scalpy, taking it like a uh, very humble, very humble Sosnoff uh, this morning. Oh, it's a, I mean, a nice little scalp. I'm not used to this guy. Nice little scalp, that's it. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right, so Tesla, what are we going to do in here? Um, You're out of your stock uh, that you were scalping. Yeah, so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so far. I just Amazon read. up a buck eighty. Uh, coin up around ninety cents. Uh, Tesla. I'm surprised coin is up actually. Well, Bitcoin caught a little bit of a bid back up to twenty one four, right? It was down to twenty one, you know, two or so. Uh, but coin up eighty cents. Uh, Tesla up three sixty. Yeah. Yeah. What are you thinking here, Tesla? Like I said, I'm, I'm catching I'm catching a little bit of short delta here. Earnings February 25th. Uh, you got uh, 30 days uh, to expiration. Um, I, I'm looking to roll from February to March is what I'm looking to do. I, with those three dollar fifty cent up move, I wish I did it yesterday. Um, Even the S and P's up ten. I know. I just. Uh... I just took off some S and P's and some um, MES and some M and Q. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm gonna have to. I don't think Tesla might have just uh, blown its little brains out up here. Uh, hope you're right, but you I never are. But you've been strong and and right last couple of days. It's like a quandary for me right now. Like usually fading you was such a good play and. Now you got a little hot in 2023. I don't know whether to adjust or not. 
Oh my God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably... I really don't know what to do, but some of the movers from today, uh, Netflix uh, down around $2, Nvidia down around a buck 80 or so, JP Morgan down a dollar-ish, uh, Goldman Sachs up small, Bank of America down small. There's yeah, it's a tug of, tug of war right now. Uh, Moderna, which Veneta talked about, up $14. There's no juice in there. Home Depot up four. EMPH, which has earnings later uh, this month, too, up $4 and change. Good Ivy rank at 39. It's got earnings February 14th, sounding up uh, Valentine Day. Uh, will you be my Valentine? There is literally no juice in any of those stocks. Hence, Darn. Hence the problem. Does that mean you won't be my Valentine? 132 in bonds. Oh, my God. I can't believe I'm going to roll. I cannot believe I have to roll up for the third time today uh, this bond position. Are they going to be up three points today? Uh, they're up a little over two and a quarter right now, up 211. I know. Are they going to be up three points? I'm going to say no. Because it sure looks like it. So let's take a look and see what we got. We're going to have to make a little adjustment in Coinbase. How's Amazon? little adjustment in Amazon. Um, Amazon catching its first bid in what seems like forever. And then it rallied, rallied hard, Sad enough. Caught a bid uh, down here around uh, 80 or so. It's been on a move from 80 to 98 without a downtick. Well, yesterday had a little downtick. I, I could really use some better strikes, though. Yeah, I 100% I, I agree with you. Um, these February strikes, $5 wide on a $97 stock are, are, are too big. But you got to wait two more days, Sad enough. Two more days. After Friday, Monday will come. You'll have dollar-wide strikes. I know, but it would be nice to have like just just a better um, better strike selection. Well, you know what? The servers can't can't handle it. But we can go to weekly options every day and every product. We can add all those strikes, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's see. Anything else you got to do before we go here? To I'm just just check the rest of my positions to see if there's anything. Volatility in by 31 cents, uh, still staying a little depressed. Volatility? Yeah. I, why, why can't volatility be down all year? Like, why can't it be down to normal? Because it'll make a very tough tough trading year for the bat to find new trades. I, I understand that, but, but like we're— Well, that's we're, my answer, okay? I know, can't but I... we're talking about it like it's like something that has to go back up tomorrow. I don't, I don't know if it does. Well, it's been on a, quite a slide for some time. I would mind a little two-sided action. Um, let's take a look and see what else do we got. All right, I'm good. All right, all right. We're going to take a quick 90-second break. We're going to come back. We got more Tasty Live coming at you after this. What comes up next? Uh, what's your assumption? Where uh, the viewers, that's you guys out there and gals, traders, uh, came to bat for us with some trading assumptions. And Sazdov's going to butcher them. We'll be back in 90 seconds with Tasty Live.
Tomas, Tomas, we're back, my friend. And you know what that means? Time for a little bit more tasty live with this. What's your assumption? Even the SP just caught a bid. They're up 14. Yeah, it's been all over the place. Um, all over the place and going no place. That's that's good for the premium sellers. Um, well, till the end by 30 cents, 32 cents. Yeah. I'm Tom Sosnoff. He's Tony Batista. It's 842. And if this is your first time joining Tasty, welcome. Um, we just do this every single day for our entire lives, and don't worry about it. <laughs> we'll be here till we're 90, hopefully. Um, God willing. God willing. Or at least until Tony's latest love child um, goes to college. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. This is true. High school, maybe even. Hey, junior high, when did you go to high school? I had this argument with my son last okay, night. Okay, well, it's a weird, I went to a weird school because we, I told you I was part of a program for, you we were part of a You were part of a cult? No, and you I was part of a, I was part of a program that- What does private school, when do you guys go? No, 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 like, private school, are you kidding? My dad, he- I You and your dad, you and your dad, yeah, okay, sure. We anyway, were I was reverse, we were, we were, we were- I know, I know, I know. Reverse you, integration. You, you talked about it. I lived it, but that's neither here nor there. I, so I don't I, think so. You lived it. Was, when did you go to high school? Simple question. Eighth grade. Eighth grade. Yeah, we were eighth through twelfth. We were tenth through twelfth. Most most schools are either ninth through twelfth or tenth through twelfth, but yeah, we but were ninth. we were yeah. eighth through twelfth. Wow. You must have been gotten picked on so bad. Now it explains a lot why you got all these one-line zingers and stuff like that. It's because they picked on you your entire life. When we were eighth graders in the high school, it was it was bad. Oh um, my God, I would have had you carrying everybody's <laughs> books. Are you kidding me? It was just bad. Great. I would have had your lunch money. I would have had your sandwiches. I would have had you everything. Couldn't, you couldn't bring any lunch money. It was you would have got you would have lost it every day. What what was your uh, what was your um, what was your thermos? What did it look like? Would you have like Scooby Doo? What'd you have? Oh no no I didn't do therm. I'm not a thermos person. Yeah sure sure. What was your lunchbox? What was it, was it like? Uh, what was your lunchbox? Box. This is eighth grade. Stand? I don't think we had lunchboxes. <laughs> okay. You don't think, but you're not sure. That's all right. We were driving. See, I knew I had a brown paper bag, but that's all right. I had a brown paper bag too, but we were driving. Sure. Above, by the time we were 16, we were driving to Vavaros, which is a little deli around the corner. Uh -huh. And uh, not a good one, but a deli around the corner. Hey, hey <laughs> best best available. And when you say best available, I swear, if I took you to this place, you'd be like, I'm not, I can't believe I just ate there. Um, <laughs> but anyway, um, no, we started 11, at eighth grade, which which sucked actually. Uh -huh. So nothing you could do. It is what it got is. It, got it. As my dad said, just get back there. Because <laughs> 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 I don't want to hear it. I grew up in the Bronx. Blah 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 blah. You know, <laughs> when I was your age, I was uh, hustling, selling scorecards outside Yankee Stadium. I used to get that speech all the time. If I made 25 cents in a day, it was a lot. Yep, yep, yep. I got the whole, I got the whole, he goes, he goes, I was an usher at Yankee Stadium when I was like, you know, he started off when he was like 11. I go, you did not do it when you were 11. He goes, all right, 13. <laughs> <laughs> I go, at least you got to see some. He goes, no, we couldn't even watch the games. They would yell at us. I'm like, well, that I believe. <laughs> Jules told me he used to go to, um, he used to go to Wrigley back in the day, and they would pay, they would give the kids free bleacher seats and give them a, like a hot dog and a soda if they if they just um, swept and picked up the garbage from the day before. I know, I know, when they left, yeah. No, no, from the day before. Oh, from the day before? Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So he goes, that, we, that's we, called, that's called, that's why child labor laws are instilled now. He goes, we would skip school, go sit in the bleachers and all Wonderful. We have... And you want to know something? The story explains a lot now. <laughs> yeah, I understand. <laughs> I understand. But we couldn't, we had that's no. That's why I was boy leader of Arister and Archon with almost perfect attendance. But I had and no, Phillip I had no way to get. a great I, baseball player. I only live 15 miles from Yankee Stadium, but I had no way to get there. Like, unless. 15 miles? Listen, I was a strong swim across the Hudson River to get to Manhattan. I didn't go to Manhattan until I was 17. 
I know, but I only live 15 miles from Yankee Stadium, and I couldn't get there. I had no way to get there. Whatever. All right, but um, let's do this. Let's see what we got here. Now I live one mile from Wrigley Field. See how life changes? <laughs> Now I live one mile from Wrigley Field, and I can walk there, and it's beautiful. Um, I would think it was a good call on United Airlines, Pat. It was a great call. It was a great call. I think it was the um, stock is down, uh, unchanged to down. It opened up um, two dollars. I wish I had just kept the shorts. Um, Tesla too. I think that was the high of the day, up four dollars. So. I can't believe I can ride the Sosnoff train again. I can't it's believe been so long. I can't believe I, I adjusted Tesla. Oh, I know. What are you gonna do? Anyway, <laughs> what are you gonna do? Um, <laughs> taking a quick look this morning before we get started here on this segment. The only problem, child, we have is Coinbase and bonds. Coinbase bonds and notes. Coinbase bonds and notes. Coinbase bonds, bonds, and, bonds notes. and notes. All right, let's do it. I'm ready. Trades that came into us from viewers all over the universe, some <laughs> outside of the universe. Like, look at this guy here, Pet Paw from Orange County. <laughs> That's outside the universe. That's outside. So I just said outside the universe. I almost swung by Orange County. B, Did you? I said Sweet. almost. Almost. B K K T. Um. BKKT, bullish. I don't know. Swing trade or until Bitcoin goes back to 30K um, as your apprentice. Me, Lord, Tom, Master Bat, please accept or criticize my asymmetrical risk crypto trade. BK, BAKKT or Apex Crypto Exchange. Well, first of all, I don't believe BAKKT has bought Apex Crypto. I think they have a deal to buy Apex Crypto. Um, uh, it's a dollar eighty six stock. You yes. either believe in it or you don't. Well, if I remember correctly, B okay, they have it here. A fully regulated crypto owned by the New York Stock Exchange with zero exposure to the FTX. So, just I can give you a little background here. So, Apex Crypto, you have to remember, is a crypto company that's run by that's currently owned by Apex, the clearing firm, who we clear through. Yes. Now we chose to use zero hash sure. instead of Apex Crypto because. We were an early investor in zero hash. Apex Crypto, Apex is also an investor in zero hash. So it's not like, you know, they're 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 also in, in the same deals that we're in. Um, but um Apex Crypto recently went on the market, was bought by BAK or or they signed a deal to do that. Um I am not interested, um, pet paw in uh BA um kkt or bkkt stock like it's like tony said it's a dollar 80 something yeah. i i am not um i'm not i don't have an opinion on this deal one way or another although i think they overpaid um i personally feel like bkkt since it's owned by the new york stock exchange and i am very much not a fan of the new york stock exchange nor how they run that business nor the people that do run that business I feel like for us, you know, we wouldn't touch the New York Stock Exchange with a 10 foot pole as an investor. So mm -hmm. if you want a long term crypto play, I mean, I much prefer Riot or Mara or, you know, or anything else or buy mm -hmm. crypto itself, anything other than BKKT. All right. That's there just my two it. cents. I, I've never bought their stock. I, I just I've watched a little bit. Um, I just wouldn't touch it. All right. Well, there you go. Let's go to the next slide. Eddie from Belgium. So we go from Orange County, California, over to Belgium. AMD. We do have an AMD position on, Eddie. Um, we are currently short the 65 puts and the 80 calls. We are dead smack solid perfect in the middle. What you want to do, dude? Reverse Jade Lizard or Broken Wing Butterfly? Oh, he's bearish in here. So, um, 
This this stock has had a very nice move recently. I mean, it's gone from what about 60, 63, 64, yeah. all the way up. It's probably ten straight points. You know that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight straight days without a downtick. I know. <laughs> Let's do it, Eddie. I like your choice of of um, IB rank still over over this. Now, remember what a reverse jade lizard is. Instead of selling a put. We're going to sell a call, and the strikes are five dollars wide, which sucks. But we're going to sell a call and an out of the and an out of the money put spread. So we're going to sell the eighty call and the sixty sixty five put spread. How's that, Pat? I don't hate that. I don't hate it either. And it looks like it's going to trade to me, Eddie, for about two forty ish. Oh, two forty two, even better. Beautiful. Tight markets. I like that call, reverse shade lizard. I like it too. All right, Eddie, good job. Um, reverse Jade Lizard. Haven't done one of those in a long time. <laughs> and I like the play. Mm -hmm. Let's go next slide. So I sold an out of the money call and an out of the money put spread. Now, normal Jade Lizard is sell a put, sell an out of the money call spread. A reverse Jade Lizard is sell a call, sell an out of the money put spread. He's right. right. He's... Out, of the, out of the money put, out of the money put, yes. Mm -hmm. So Robert from Fourth and Plum in Arkansas. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> me, me either. <laughs> There's something to that. It's 40th fourth... and plum, though, but yes, I don't 40th know. 40th I mean. and plum. Yeah. Yes. I don't even know. We're 40th and plum in Arkansas. Tony, look that up. That's bothering me for a second. There's some hidden message in there, some subliminal message. I don't know what it is. Fourth and plum, Arkansas. 40th and plum. Oh, it's a song. Oh, it is. Wayne, Wayne Rain. 40th and plum, a 1957 song. I don't know. It's a song. I don't know the song. I said there was a message in there. All right, Robert. That's very cute. Um, Looks like a country song. I don't know. All right. I can take it I, if, I, if we hear it. John, 40th and Plum, what is that? Hello, John. No clue. Well, you got, well I'm not asking. I mean, you got you to go. You got to bring it up. We got to hear it. Let me look for it. Hold on. Let's get back right. to the trade and I'll look for it. Okay. All right. Let's get back to the trade. Yes. John's our music expert. Um, he is our music expert. Well, JJ is actually our um, guess that tune he's expert. Our flip, he's our flip side expert. No, no. He's our guess that tune expert. Like, you know, <laughs> in how many notes? He's really good at that. But John's more of, you know, the, our history buff. A, cl um, a classic. A classic. He's a classic. Uh, he's a classic rock. You know, yes. UPS, neutral, what about a strangle, me lord, and the bat can do the same, okay? Let's take a look. Um, now, UPS is not a crazy liquid stock, just let's be clear. It's traded 262,000 shares today, and the markets are very average. You want to stay small in here. What if we were to do um, the 20 delta strangle? which is we're, we're probably going to go 160 195 um and mid price these you want to stay small in ups um it's not a stock you want to you know take a big shot in by any stretch um and i don't know how far off mid price we have to go mid price is wrapped around 350 ish i think you're probably going to go to about 340 well 347 there you go. Not too bad. Three cents off mid price. You got it, John? Let's take a look. Uh, yes, maybe, I do. Let's maybe hear it. We can, maybe we can play it on the, on the close. No, let's uh, hear it. Yes, boss. You know what, John? We should play that right now. Right this minute. Today. No time like the present. Sometime today. All right, no, that's okay. We got it. Not bad. Looks like a young Tony Batista. <laughs> Looks like a uh -huh. clean-cut young Tony Batista. Got uh -huh. it. 
All right. I was a little long haired hippie freak. Let's go next slide. All right, hold on. What's the next one we got? Even the S and P's up thirteen, Tesla up two. Volatility in by sixteen cents now, Sadnoff. Six J. We're Aaron from oh Aaron's going back to the well. Aaron's the guy that was sending me the the um lean hogs trade, Tony. Uh oh. Let's check out what he's got here in six J. We do have a bunch of six J positions on, but no short premium. Uh what I say, six J. IV rank of 58, not bad. Let's go out to March, 46 days, perfect. Um, I think the yen will settle in here. I'm okay with that. We've taken our shots in the yen. Um, we're gonna go 20 delta and 20 delta. Puts us in the 76.82 for, let's see if we get filled here, Aaron. Um, I'm working the trade, 76.82. Um, take a fill, fill 790. Had to give up a, had to give up a tick. Let's go to the next slide. All right. Got it. I like it, Aaron. Something it's different. Beautiful. Um, Teresa from Bern, Switzerland, and she wants to do SI, which is not silver, but silver gate, right? Yeah, it just had earnings too, if I remember cor correctly. And they've just, I they've just, Teresa, they've just picked themselves up off the floor, as we would say. <laughs> um, I this... rank at 37, still good. It's up 50 cents. Okay, Bat. Give me your best uh, trade ideas here. Ooh, Silvergate. Now he's bullish in there. Uh, she, that's the, she. I'm sorry, she's bullish in here. Is that your assumption too? Yeah, sure. She says bullish. Okay, now you only have Jan and Tony, Tony, Tony. She says bullish. <laughs> I get that. But sometimes just because it's their assumption, not your assumption, you change this. There's no March. So you're really at a disadvantage here. Um, February with 30 days. There will be March. Okay, but we don't have them right now today to make a trade, right? I mean, yeah, there's going to be March, there's going to be April, there's going to be May. The world is going to continue far after us, and so will the options. But... That's neither here nor there for this story, right? So you're gonna have to stick to February. I think you sell the 12 and a half puts. Very simple. Plenty of open interest, 16,000, 23,000, 8,000. So don't we're give gonna me no- do, We're gonna do the Jade Lizard in there. We're gonna sell the 12 and a half puts like Tony said, and the 17 and a half 20 call spread, okay? So, you, so you're doing a two and a half dollar wide. You're only going to collect. You're going to collect under two thirty for this. I'm going to collect around two twenty five, I think. Right, and you're two fifty wide on the put on the call spread. So it's going to show you more like a fifty fifty shot when you look at this. But if you just uh, raise that price up to, let's just say for argument's sake, to simulate it up to two fifty five, you'll have a break even closer to sixty five percent. So in my eyes, with only you know, 25 cents of risk to the upside. I look at it as a plus 65% trade. Yeah, 225 <laughs> build. Um, let's go to the next slide. Thanks, Teresa. Uh, RTX from Reading, Connecticut. What's RTX? Oh, no, Raytheon. Have not traded Raytheon in a couple of years. Since since it was Raytheon. <laughs> I, I just haven't traded Raytheon. Uh, is this stock liquid enough? Let's take a look. Mike is bullish in Raytheon. What are you going to do here? Uh, Raytheon, Ivy rank of 17. It's got earnings January... 24th five dollar wide strikes in in january in uh, february you'll get dollar wide strikes uh after expiration but doesn't help you today in may i know uh low iv rank i'm not a premium seller in here um mike i mean if you're bullish in here i the only play I, I would even consider is um, buying the 95 par. 
It's not my favorite play. Yeah, but you know what? Ivy Rank is 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 low. You haven't really ever traded the stock. I mean, I don't mind doing the fine risk trade. No, I don't mind it either. That's what I'm saying. You know, buying the 95 par, it's a it's a five dollar wide call spread. You're gonna pay. I'm gonna pay 301 for it. Small. Just testing the waters. Let's go to the next slide. I'll take a shot and rate down the tiny little shot. I'm not bullish or bearish in there. Jim from Lexington, South Carolina. You reduce your size when you're trading. When yeah, you're trading stuff like that. Yeah, it just tests the water. Mm -hmm. um, what does Jim want to do here? He wants to RETA. I don't know this stock either. Do you? No, I do not. R-E-T-A. Let's take a look. RETA Pharma Rexta, RETA Pharmaceutical. Uh, high VR earnings in March. FDA panel results. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah, but look, look, at the, look at the markets in here, Tom. I'm going to save you some trouble. Markets are a dollar wide. This is a tough one, Jim, on a lot of different levels. It's got very, it's only traded 39,000 shares today. That's kind of an automatic non starter for us. Um, there is a tiny little bit of volume. There is, a, there's some decent open interest. I'll give you that. Um, but I'm not a, there is decent open interest on I'm not a big fan of you know of a stock that has what does it have a 200 percent volatility yeah yeah so my issue here is that this stock's either going to you know 20 bucks or 15 bucks or 80. Um, uh, da, 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 da. yeah if you want to sell puts it's on you dude I mean I would I mean, look at the 17 and a half puts. They're zero bid at a dollar fifty. The 20 puts are 75 cents at 125. It's not my thing. It's yeah. not my thing. I pass on on biotechs and and pharmaceuticals. Let's go to the next slide. I mean, I believe it. Maybe it's great. Mini wheat, Daryl from St. Louis, Missouri. I don't know. 60 days. First soft commodity trade for a tasty bite account. Do you know, I don't think I've traded mini wheat ever. I mean, we trade wheat a lot. Mm -hmm. um, 15. What is that? That's oh, bonds. Okay. 15 IV rank. How and about frosted mini wheats? Do you have you ever? I, I'm not a fan. <laughs> yeah. Not to uh, hurt the roof of your mouth or something like that? What's wrong I just, with that? I just don't like them. But a mini wheat contract, I'm open to this. Did you um, have a lot of cereal growing up? No. Yeah, me either. Never had Too cereal. Expensive. This is never. I didn't care about it. Um, you didn't care about it. I didn't care about cereal. It doesn't do anything for me. I like cream and wheat. <laughs> uh, cream is some young guy. You like that? Mini wheat. <laughs> Seriously, um, what is wrong with you? What's wrong with me? What's wrong with you? I said I like cream and wheat. Uh Let's see. <laughs> Daryl's not giving me any help here. Which way? Which direction? If I was, he said to, he doesn't know. He doesn't know. He doesn't know. I mean, right, Daryl, so there's no options in here. So if you could, you either got to go long or short. Daryl's yeah. pleading the fifth. Okay, hold on. You gonna flip a coin? Yeah, flip a coin here. You want Daryl? This is how you do it. Go <laughs> ahead. Yeah, I don't have a coin. You got a coin? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> what the hell's going on in America? Here, I'm gonna pick a card. Okay. Don't you have don't you have a chip there? You got a chip there. It's got Brittany on both sides of it. <laughs> All right. Well, well mark one side. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm just gonna pick a a card here and I'm not looking. Ace is high or low? No, no, no. If What's it's gonna be in there? It's gonna what are you gonna do? Just pick red or black. Oh, okay. Red or black. Got okay. it. Okay, beautiful. Pick red or black. Red down, black up, okay? <laughs> okay, sounds good. Red short black long all right come on joker come on joker <laughs> i can't see hold it down a little bit red oh what's that what i say again red is down you monkey oh red short right okay oh oh you don't want to be short this well i just got short of mini wheat so we're oh. good all right you're <laughs> phil daryl we're short oh, man. I, you I, your guess is as good as ours but, uh, wow, we, I can't wait till the one day on the show time goes, why am I short wheat? I, I don't trade wheat from the short side. Why did I do here? I can't wait. It's a mini wheat. I don't even know what it is per contract. 
<laughs> Good job out of you. I'll figure it out. Let's go next slide. Uh, Jack from Berryville, Virginia is bullish in IBM in March. Earnings is on the way. Thank God. <laughs> One thing we learned about IBM is the earnings can be good for 700 straight times or bad for 700 straight times. It doesn't matter. <laughs> IBM, he's bullish. Um, what's IBM doing? Down $2 today. Good. Yeah, See, I like, yeah. I like selling stuff into the hole, which is nice. Stock is 143. Let's sell the 135 puts. Got it. Got it. I'm working them at 199. That's kind of it. Oh, IBM, I forgot what a torture, what a tortured what life a tortured we live. tortured soul this one is? Yeah. <laughs> All right, Jack, I'm leaving it in at 197. Here. I know I'm going to regret this <laughs> going down to 190. I'm leaving it in at 196. Whatever happens, happens. Let's go to the next slide. And Harold from Houston, Texas. And by the way, don't forget, Bad Trader Tour is coming to Houston on March 25th. If you haven't signed up yet, please do. Hopefully, we are going to be, we're going to fill the place. I don't know how big it is, actually. It's a new venue for us. But um, if you have any chance to come out to Houston, March 25th, we'd love to see you. And then after that, on May 13th, we'll be in um, uh, Atlanta, Georgia. But let's get Houston filled up first. Uh, Harold R., from Houston, Texas, NET. Tony, NET, what's that? Ooh, uh, NET, let's take a look. I do not know. God, everybody's, they're stumping us today. Cloudflare? Let's see, uh, earnings of February 9th. Let's see what the markets look like. Markets aren't bad. Markets aren't bad. Would you like to know a little bit more about NET? Uh, decent IVR, high IVR, decent markets. Watch out for earnings on 2.9. I'm going to go wide in here, Harold, because I've never traded this stock before. Um, where's the stock? 47? It's a cloud service provider, as you may have guessed. Yeah, it's got a little upside skew. We're going to go. Oh, it's like a private like a private cloud, like you like you normally have, like you're in the private sector. Like my own private Idaho. 3560. Yeah. You're 30, filled. 3560. The only order we're working right now is IBM, not filled yet. And I got a little cute in there. I tried to middle the market and did not get filled. So we'll see what happens. Um, Okie dokie. That's it. John, how many we do? I counted seven. It's quite possible. Like I said, we're not filled in IBM, but we filled Net, Mini Wheat, uh, RTX, uh, SI, 6J, UPS, AMD. Seven. Beautiful. John, my man with the home run. Nobody better in the business right there, my friend. So look, we're going to take a quick 90 second break. Hold on, we're let's just a quick, a quick little review before we go to Jacob, because we can still understand this. So, we did a reverse Jade Lizard in AMD, which means we sold a call, sold a put spread. UPS, we sold a strangled. 6J, we sold a strangled. IBM comes in late. Oh, there you go. Number eight. Um, SI, we sold a Jade Lizard, which means we sold a put, sold a call spread. In RTX, we went straight long and bought a vertical spread. In X, in, in Mini Wheat, we sold a future outright. In IBM, we sold a naked put. And in NET, we sold a wide strangle. There you go. Eight out of 10. That, we got some opening trades on that. That's good. Absolutely, absolutely. Hey, listen, let's take some, a quick 90 second break and come back. We got more Tasty Live coming up after this. What do we got coming up? Oh, joy! Jacob, the skinny and options math. Next is Tasty Live. Hey, you. Yeah, you. You deserve a big bonus and a better broker. Now, when you open and fund a Tastyworks account, you can get up to...
Tomas, Tomas, we're back, my friend, but enough out of you. This man's in the house, Jacob, the Skinny and Options man. How are you, my friend? Good morning, Tony. I am good. I'm good. We've had a little bit of sunshine here. It's it's a whole new world. <laughs> Beautiful. I'm glad. I want you to dry out there in the uh, left coast. Yeah, well, dry is 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 a is a long off dream, but we can have some clear skies for a minute. <laughs> uh, you know what? You guys have been paying for a lifetime of 75 and sunny. It's okay if you get. A yeah, yeah, yeah. No, listen, we, we understand the fact that it's never cold. <laughs> it's nice. Let me tell you something. When I was in LA last weekend and it was pouring oh, rain, God. and I was and it was pouring rain, and everybody out there was like, "Oh my God, the weather's so bad." Oh my God, I was like, I was like, you know what? I actually. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't feel bad for one person. No, like, no. everybody oh. was complaining. And I'm like, oh. you know, you got no Very right. Cool take. No one should feel bad for anybody in L.A. <laughs> no. well, like, some people were born in L.A. and they maybe can get some pity. But, it, but most people in L.A. moved to L.A. and knew yeah. what they were getting into. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Damn straight. Yeah. All right. What you got for us today? Uh, so today I wanted to, it's sort of a follow-up from last week. Uh, last week we worked out this, this I called the back of the envelope Black-Scholes, where we got a, a, a significantly simpler formula for the Black-Scholes price for straddles as opposed to just any old option strategy. Mm -hmm. um, and so today we're going to sort of exploit our simpler formula for, for price to get some simpler formulas for, for Greeks. Um, and then we're going to hopefully use these sort of simple Greek formulas to get some intuition going, because that's that's really the goal here. Is, is not to build up anybody to do all these computations themselves, but to like understand the computations so you can have some intuition about what's going on when the software is doing it for you. Um, oh, so. more back of the envelope Greeks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so, so this top line here is what doesn't fit on an envelope. Um, that, that's our full Black Scholes. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so while the Black Scholes formula can be quite daunting. But I think it would be really, I'm sorry for interrupting, but I think it would be really funny is if we took this back of the envelope Greeks heading to a Greek mm. restaurant down the street, because we're in Greek town, and yeah. just said, you know what, can you guys interpret this? Yeah, you I mean, uh, they'd, they'd be really at a loss, because we're going to cover a new to, uh, Vega today, and they would say it's a new, and <laughs> <laughs> the actual Greek letter it is. Um, but so right here's our, our monstrous formula, the, the Black Scholes one. It's it's quite cumbersome. Um, but we saw that if we restrict ourselves to only working out the money, so S equals K, and we use a first order Taylor series for the normal CDF uh, N, um, then we can approximate the Black Scholes fair price for straddle as. And oh, last week I did it with uh, I used uh, business days until expiration in the formula, so which makes the constants change to instead of 2400, it's 2000. Um, and this tripped up a lot of viewers. So I uh, hear I'm working with actual di calendar days till expiration, which changes the constant to 2400. Um, it makes it slightly less accurate. We've done a couple of studies in the past about how, you know, it's really business days that track better, right? That the effect of a weekend is only slightly more than the effect of one day. And like long weekends are also much closer to one day than they are to three or four days of, of market change. Um, so it's a little bit more accurate to track your trades in terms of business days till expiration, but it's really easier to track them in terms of calendar days till expiration. So I've done the calendar day formula here for everyone. Um, and just to, to throw an example, we, this is overnight numbers from last night. Right, the spy was thirty was uh, three nine seven seven. VIX was eighteen seven one. Um, stick those in. If we do fifty eight days till expiration, the the total comes out at twenty three sixty one. And then the actual market price was twenty three seventy four, which is you know it's not exact. Right? We, we did some approximations in the middle, and Black-Scholes itself is not a perfect formula. Um, but that's a pretty good thing for something for if we're going to use this multiply three things across formula instead of this do a tremendous number of computations and two, two normal CDFs and exponents and logs and all these things. Um, I think it's a, it's a pretty good approximation. Um, you know, you're off by 13 cents. I'll take um, your word for it. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just multiplication. Anyone with a calculator can do that one. Um, so what I want to do today is to sort of exploit our simple formula and get ourselves some simple Greeks. Um, so right, a simpler, if imperfect price formula means simpler calculus for simpler, if imperfect Greeks. Um, so for example, we can take the derivative with respect to the days until expiration or the time until expiration, um, right? And everyone, everyone remembers from calculus that the derivative of a squ uh, square root t is one over two, one over two square root t. 
Um, so we get a factor of a half, so the 2400 becomes a 4800, and the square root of j acceleration moves itself to the denominator, and that gets us our theta uh, for a straddle. Um, and this really gets us a couple of things, right, to get our intuition around theta correct, which is, one, we see that the larger the, the volatility and the larger the underlying, the higher theta is, right, because it's got the S and the volatility in the numerator there, and that the square root of the time is in the denominator, which is why theta blows up post-expiration, right? It really lets that sort of be right in everyone's faces, um, right? As the expiration goes, gets, gets close to zero, that zero in the denominator makes things explode. Um, right, and that's our, our, our big theta is near expiration, which is part of why we'd like to manage it early, to try to avoid these near expiration kind of wild swing effects that can happen. Um, so there's, there's our, our theta approximate formula. Um, if we roll forward one, we can get our, our vega approximate, which is even simpler because there's no square root on the volatility term. <laughs> um, uh, so we take the derivative with respect to volatility, we get the vega or nu um, is the, the derivative with respect to volatility is, and now there's no 2400, we just, it's a linear function in, in, in volatility. Um, so we, the derivative is just the coefficient on it, which is one over 2400 spot price square root times uh, day expiration. Um, and so this gets us that to, uh, this gets us the, sort of the most important feature of this is the square root of time scaling, um, right? Which is both pretty ubiquitous. We notice a lot of things scale with square root of time because really square root of time, as we discussed in uh, central limit theorem things previously, square root of time and volatility are, are very intrinsically related. They, they always sort of go as a pair together. Um, and so that square root of time uh, shows us why the sensitivity of volatility gets smaller in your expiration, right? it vanishes down, but only as a square root. So not, it doesn't all go away immediately, but again, this is one of our weird, right? The, the effects near expiration are very strange or different compared to sort of further out from expiration, which is a good reason for why we preach rolling and managing. Um, and then the other thing to do here is now that we've got sort of these simple theta and uh, vega formulas, is while those are simple theta and vega formulas for straddles, but we can recover sort of what the intuition should be for the Greeks on other positions, right? We don't actually trade a lot of straddles around here. Um, and but that's simple because we know that both theta and vega are largest at the money. And so these sort of give the scaling and then there's a drop off as you move away from the money, but the drop off is pretty consistent. So, right, if you're always trading 16 deltas, you also get the same sort of time scaling and the same sort of uh, volatility scaling as these things. You just sort of get the constants would be different. It's a little bit trickier to work out what the constants should be, so we don't do that because we're really just trying to build up intuitions here. Um, right, and remember our vega here is the sensitivity to volatility, right? This is how much your position, how much volatility matters to your position. Um, and we, we've also covered before how the, the inverse correlation between price and volatility means that these vegas are like, even if you are just trying to figure out your directional bias, it's important to pay a little bit of attention to your vegas, right? That if, as you're carrying negative vegas, that's the same as carrying long deltas which means you kind of want to cancel that with a little bit of negative delta, um, right? This is a good way to figure out what your what your long vegas might be, and like, if you're not going to just use the platform and its vega column, which is of course recommended. <laughs> um, right, I'm not saying not to use it. I'm just saying to try to understand what's going on behind the scenes. That's it. Um, this doesn't go quite that far, right? We've done everyone's third and fourth favorite Greeks of Theta and Vega, uh, but we've skipped everyone's first and second favorites of Delta and Gamma, um, and that's unfortunately for a good reason. Um, and it's because in order to get our approximation formula, we, assume, we, we, we said we were working with at the money only, and what we did there mathematically is that we set S equal to K, um, which was very good for simplifying the formulas because it made, you know, S over K be one, which made log S over K be zero, which really dropped out of a lot of terms from the formulas, it was great. Um, but it has this unfortunate feature where now we can't take derivative with respect to S uh, because taking derivative with respect to S isn't really honest in this formula because if we change S, we're also changing K and it's, you're not really allowed to change your strikes quite that freely when you're, when you're managing your trades, right? You sort of have to st stick to individual points, um, right? They, they don't get a full continuum of prices, right? Your, your price might change by a penny, but your strike has to move by a dollar. Um, so you can't move them perfectly in sync like this. Um, so the, the two formulas that you would get from this uh, are not valid, right? The delta is not given by volatility square root of time until expiration over 2400. That just isn't the right formula for, it isn't even close to the right formula for delta. Um, right, that's the formula for, that's the sensitivity to changing both spot and strike simultaneously. 
um, which is not really a useful thing. And gamma is not zero, right? Which is what this would tell you, um, right? What this is actually saying is that if you somehow perfectly roll the position at, at all times, right? You you always stayed, kept a straddle, a straddle, you, you moved it with the money. Well, then you'd have no gamma, which makes sense because your delta would always be zero because you were always perfectly hedging. Um, but that's not really helpful. No one can do that. Um, so don't run away with these formulas too far. You can't take your derivatives with respect to S only with respect to time to expiration or volatility because the S is doing something a little funky. Um, that, that's my warning for the day. Um, yeah, that's it. That's we, gotta, public, public, we call it public service announcement. Yeah, public service announcement. This approximation formula cannot be used to find your deltas or your gammas, but it can be used to find your vegas and your, and your thetas. Um, so while we trust the software to do complicated computations uh, better than us, and it's certainly better than practice and trying to work them out ourselves, Understanding the formula can help us better understand our trades. Um, and so we can use the Stroud approximation formula to get approximate Greeks. And here I've just repeated the three formulas for us, and I've emphasized that they're approximate by doing squiggly equals. Um, uh, but th they are quite good, right? So within a couple of percentages, percentage off. Um, it, it is better if you, again, if you use business days to expiration and 2000 instead of 2400, um, just to, to alter that scaling. Uh, it gets it a little bit tighter, but it's still, it's it's, it's only off by a couple of percent um, as, as compared to sort of market observed. Um, and these might not give the most accurate values for Greeks, but the cleaner formulas can help us to grasp the sensitivities, right? We have a much better idea about how to expect our Greeks to change, right? The second order Greeks are sort of more apparent, right? How does your theta change when price changes? Well, it goes up about linearly. How does, how does theta change when volatility changes? It goes up about linearly. How does theta change as time goes forward? Well, it falls about square root, or it grows, right, because the time is getting smaller, but about square root, square rootedly. And then Vega, very similar argument, right? It's about it's about independent of, of volatility, it's about linear in price, and it's about square root of, of time, um, right? These are sort of the, the, the quick, quick and dirty, how do these things change for us? Um, and I, right, you're not really intending to use these to evaluate your trades, you're intending to use these to sort of evaluate, well, I have this much theta right now, what is my theta likely to be tomorrow? Or what is my theta likely to be if volatility expands? Or what is my theta likely to be if price falls? Um, right, it helps you get sort of a handle on that. Don't use it to compute your volatility, your, your theta, but you can use it to get a good grasp of how you expect your theta to change. It's interesting, I'm still confused how you get the two squiggly lines. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I, I write slash approx. That's how I get the two squiggly lines. Um, it means the value is close, but not perfect. No, I get what it means. I don't know how you how you get that to to actually type that way. Uh, I, I use LaTeX to type all my math. Got it. No, well, that's... we learned a lot of stuff here today, Tom. I hope you absorbed it. It's <laughs> heavy for me. It's heavy for me. But so I guess the, the lightest parts are that volatility that your 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 theta is going to are, are the scalings. Those are the those are the parts that I would like people to sort of take away as the things to keep in your pockets. Right, the, that your your theta scales linearly with uh, price and volatility and anti and anti square root with uh, time to expiration, and then Vega scales linearly with price and square root with time to expiration. Those are sort of the the to me the, the key parts that someone could actually manage to like internalize. What he said, Tom, and now we're going to take a quick 90 second break. We're going to come back. We got more Tasty Live coming at you with the uh, oh joy. Mr. Scott Sheridan next is Tasty Live.
You're alive. Uh, Thomas, we're back, so enough out of you. Daisy Works World Headquarters, your friend and mine, Mr. Scott Sheridan. He was not the cause of that long break we had. That's all on Tom Sosnoff. I will accept responsibility because I did kind of jab the bear a little the and pot. then stirred the pot. And then the bear just got up on the hind legs and the claws came out. Woof. Oh, man. Speaking of that bear, we haven't seen that bear commercial when Tom jumps off the screen when we show a video of a bear. That was all That's for show. One. Give me a break. That wasn't real. <laughs> you know, we got to dial this down right now because he can only take about two, three minutes of it being attacked. And then it no, starts no, to No, no, seriously, I can take hours of it. I'm fine. <laughs> you guys do not. You guys, you know. Okay. In fairness, yeah. you can go at me. You can go at Tony. I get a little protective of Beth. I get protective of Nikki. But when you go at John, and John had nothing to do with this, you cross the line. I didn't go at John. Oh, oh yes, you I did. I agree. Right? Yeah. You go at John. That's going at the... the you know, I already the sent him an email stuff. this morning. All I already I said, told him. All I, said is, all I said, sometimes he runs a little slow. No, that's not <laughs> what you said. You said even John doesn't take this long usually. <laughs> There's something along those lines. John... I'm here for you, okay? You can record that set of data. I'm good. I'll, I'll back that one up. And I'm here for you, Tom. Tesla down a dollar thirty-two. <laughs> there you go. Ooh. I said we'd make the high on the opening in Tesla and UAL. I think I was right on both of them. What can't you do? That's right. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Uh, well, speaking of what can't you do, um, can we get the shawarma update or any other food updates? Because I want to no, know. No, I gave the shawarma update said. this morning. So if you were listening to the show at seven o'clock. <laughs> I was on I was on a best X golf. Sorry. Oh God! So I gave the shawarm update. Do you we're, throw in, away? we're in. We're in, but it don't look You're, good. Y yeah. You didn't yeah. throw the machine away. No, I went to a place last night and I talked to a professional uh, about it. Oh, you gave up already? So you just buying it from them? No, 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 no. I just asked a couple of questions, and and the funny part of the story <laughs> was when I told him I had a home machine, he kind of laughed. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. <laughs> kind of. Nah. All right. Well, I heard. Listen, it's okay. I just want to hear Tony. Will you? Because I didn't get the invite. Will you take some video and give me the update how the shawarma worked out? I will. Be oh sure. no, 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 no! You are invited. You know. I, I, I didn't get an invite, and I'm not a B-lister. There's no. There's so, no written invites. I I, oh no! Well, I didn't get a verbal either. I said I didn't get an invite, and you said fine. If you want to come, you can come. What are you doing <laughs> for? What are you doing for uh, Super Bowl? Going to the wedding Watch with Anton. <laughs> He's got a wedding on Super no, Bowl no, Sunday. No, no, no. Oh. <laughs> Although, in fairness, the Six and I did get married Saturday night before Super Bowl. But that changed now. It's got moved back a couple weeks. Oh, maybe he's the, the one Super you're talking Bowl. about, Tony. The Super Bowl used to... It's because there were some friends of the Sixes who were from Green Bay. I don't know who they were playing, but they were in the Super Bowl next day, and they left to go to the Super Bowl. True story. No, I don't remember that. Yeah, but then they changed this. Then they added a... They added a game, and then they have to five weeks, so now it's two weeks later. But if you want to wish me a happy anniversary, it's January 25th, the marketing calendar weekend today. Oh, my God. If I start wishing you a happy anniversary, <laughs> I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> if, I st if, I, if I'm if I forced to remember your anniversary. Yeah. Hey, be careful. The six, my, uh, six is coming down the stairs. Be careful. She so well, can hear this. How many years have you guys been married? But this will be 26. Thanks for asking. Congratulations, Scott. Takes a lot of time. Thank you. I appreciate that. Now, my dad did something. May he rest in peace. It was super impressive. He was married twice for 25 years plus. That also takes a lot of effort. I, <laughs> I expire at 17, 18 years. Hey, hey, Tony did it twice what? for 17 years. That's impressive. Well, you're still going. No, yeah, but you're I'm still going all the time. Oh, boy. What did you do? No, no, no. I could just feel it. <laughs> and, and I should get an award. I should get an award for just being married. Oh, I don't know. I, saw, <laughs> I think I, I think I, she, I, she should get the award. Oh, let me see it. We'll just send it. She should get the picture. award for sure. I'll okay, send it. I'll send it to you because I've been wanting to share it forever. Just it's share it. Really I don't care, tough guy. Share. Oh, you it. do care. Wait a minute. I don't care. Did you Did you ever see the picture of Slimmy in the rap? Yeah, sure. Yeah, we used to have this part promo. Right? <laughs> that was one of the best. Are you kidding me? Please tell me that's not what I'm getting at, Tom. 
<laughs> no, 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 no. Well, I don't know. It depends on your. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> could be. Oh boy. It's the caption oh. that's the best. Is this from the missus? All right, from the missus. Yeah, yeah. 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 I like it. You could put it up Very on the screen. Nice. I don't care. Nah, oh, you do care. Nah, 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 no, nah. I don't care. It's better, it's better to hold it back. It, it was it was cold in there. I don't want to embarrass you. <laughs> Omaha. Oh. <laughs> All right. The caption, oh. caption says "All grow, no show," but I don't want to. I don't want to show that. That ain't right. Oh, uh, you can't show this. Uh, <laughs> <see>. <laughs> no, you can't. You can't show that. See? Okay. See? No. They no. say I'm not mature. No, I'm mature. For sure. No, for sure. <laughs> All right, should we get to some business? Because I know you got Nikki yes, Bat Nick, 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 Nick All right. <laughs> Top 15 symbols going through the system. First 40 minutes of the day. No broad base indices or futures time for you. Number 15, Uber coming into the 44 for everybody else. We got for mention Tesla coming into a 43, Apple at a 51, UAL at a 5, Coin at a 40, TLT at a 21, NVIDIA. At a 16, Amazon at a 50, AMD at a 24, Microsoft at a 35. Here's one we haven't seen in a while. MRNA at a 10, Meta at a 43, Google with an L at a 49, Netflix at a 36, ARKK at a four, and number 15 for Tom Uber at a 44, rounding out the next 10, EWZ at a 34, and BBBY at a 64. Can they just like finally just say we're out of business because it looks like that's where they're heading? It it does, but you know the the, the stock traded up to four seventy seven today. It's four thirty. It? That's a big move. What's that? It's a big move. Oh, it's a big move, and it was a dollar on the tenth. So yeah, you know, it, yeah. It's, I just keep getting coupons. Like every half hour, I get coupons texted to me. You know, limited time only. Come in, get twenty dollars, twenty dollars off, thirty dollars off, what forty dollars off. For what store? BBBY. Yeah. No, for Home Depot. <laughs> I mean, hey, what do I mean? What I mean? <laughs> no, hey, this is too much too much too oh my god! <laughs> like I don't listen. Oh Scott's stories just drone on for hours. Like I can only hear part of them. Like I, I catch All I like, said was I get coupons every like. Why would you minutes? get coupons like, for Bed Bath and Beyond? Because I must have signed up for a text when I went in one time, and literally. So when you go in and buy something from a store like Bed Bath & Beyond, you say, excuse me, is there anywhere where I can sign up for a text? Here, Bed text. Bath & Beyond, new coupon, get $20 off. Can, can, you know why, Tom? Because he's got there, nothing to do. Is there a you know, place, he's not busy. when, when he's you're not, not working, when you're not working, is there a place you, you just walk into stores and say, hey, 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 where can I sign hey, up for, can where can me? I sign up I to get more information? <laughs> can you guys text me when there's a sale? <laughs> brutal brutal <laughs> has it been like this all day i don't know i'm not talking to him anymore she doesn't know she's not here working yeah i don't you know know what? sorry some of us she's on the scott know. she's some. on the scott plan now sleeps in till nine i learned from the back <laughs> <laughs> thank you Matt. i trained you well right? <laughs> sleep till nine go out for a hike around 10 30 come back have lunch Go play with the kids for a little bit, maybe hit some balls, maybe play a little pickleball, and then you call oh, it that. Yeah, I'm training. <laughs> you guys better just hope you keep me alive because that's the only thing that's going to, you know, pay oh, the bills. What happens? Did you go out last night? <laughs> only for dinner. No, no, no. Yesterday he was tired because, you know, he had to perform out in California. By the way, he did not work Monday night. I carried the load <laughs> again because. Well, he wasn't carrying the load, but anyway, um, uh, I worked on Monday, on Monday, so he was tired, a little yawning yesterday on the show, you know, in between break, but today, he's ready to yeah, power I, I, When you go on attack mode, something bad happens. I'm not, so nothing, you either, nothing you bad, either, nothing bad. Either, oh, something did, you were out late last night. No, Don't I wasn't out late. This. I just went to dinner, it was beautiful, nothing. Where, oh, you where went to you? dinner? I wasn't hungry. Where did you Little, just local. A, yeah, local, a little Mediterranean place. I love Mediterranean food. <laughs> <laughs> Andres? No. Athenian room? Like that, but no, no, Mediterranean. Athenian room is Greek. I, I consider Mediterranean mm -hmm. a little different. What, what, do you, what do you consider Mediterranean? <laughs> Italian food? 
Because <laughs> it's in the Mediterranean. I mean. <laughs> hey, Tony. I tried. Thank you, Scott. I appreciate yeah, it. At least you got you got Nicky back coming. And he's our kid. Oh, this poor kid is too young to get abused <laughs> like this. But hey, Nicky. Good luck. Thank you. Let's let's bring in my offspring. Goodbye. You know him as Johnny Trader. Hello, boys. Hello, son. How are you? Hello. I, I got. I gotta say, the, the, the 10, 15 minutes that we get in between that break, it's the highlight of my week. <laughs> I get it once a week, it's the best, it's the best, when you guys just go at it, it's amazing. It's yeah, amazing. you know, just a little natural ribbing, you know. Yeah, it's, it's good, it's, it's good to see, it's good to see. Some I got a pro tip it. for you though, Tom. So if you fail with the shawarma, Trader Joe's, fantastic, pre-made marinated shawarma like little package thing you can buy six seven eight bucks chicken thighs marinated in like a, a, a mediterranean spices and marinade it's beautiful where, where is that in the meat section or is it somewhere yeah, else yeah yeah it's, oh, it's in the goes. vegetable section <laughs> <laughs> it's one of it's one of their like uh three item dinners so you buy the the shawarma package you buy the mediterranean salad and then you get like some pita and you make like a whole little you know little sandwich with it little pita with it very good very good nick nick with all due respect i have my own machine i'm at a different level already than this <laughs> i okay. know you're I'm saying, saying you're, you're, at the, you're, you're at the trader yeah, joe's he's level at he's at a different level he's <laughs> listen, lost right listen i get it i get it you're you know the big kahuna you got the shawarma machine you're you got at a different you're, at, you're in a different place than me we're, we're in two I'm different places saying is if you get in a bind and you fail with the the big old shawarma machine you go over to trader joe's you buy five six packages of the of the meat and you got it all all ready for you throw it in the oven bake it easy done five no six problem. packages of meat that's not even going to feed anton i'm going to need <laughs> a lot more than that i mean all right all right do i get the invite though to, sure to the sure really okay good as i he, mentioned he said if you came to watch I mentioned the super this bowl morning, it is how something went wrong i go i go yeah. if you come to my house for the super bowl it's basically just it's an indication that your life's over Oh, 100%. I would be caught dead there. I wouldn't even... You couldn't pay me to go, but I appreciate that I get the invite. It would There's just, no way. It would be... It would basically be the end of Nick Batista, as we once yeah. know. Well, no, Tom, I have friends, so I have things that I'll do on Super Bowl. You know, they, I don't need... I don't need the extra from you. You don't have but to... You don't, Nick, don't worry, Nick. We believe you. You don't have to... You don't have to prove it. All of right. course, we'd like to see pictures of these so-called friends. Sure, sure, no problem. Sure, no problem. No, I, I already told you. My friend spotted you on the plane ride home from California, and he said, what, Tom doesn't drive, fly private? Yeah, no. I, I had to ask him. I was like, is Tom in first class at least? Please tell me he's in first class. He was in last class. It was. All right. American All right. Airlines, Nick, that's my jam. I mean, I'm an, I'm an American Airlines boy. No, I know. I know. All right, I got a couple trades for you. Want some trades? Sure. Yeah, you got like two minutes. Beautiful. Go for it. All right, I go. I know you guys were were schmoozing. Amazon, you got a position? Lots of positions. I'm sure you do. So I'm doing a iron condor here, pretty much flat delta. I'm selling around the 30-ish delta option for the short options, going to the 90-80 short put spread, the 105-115 call spread. I did the whole package at 367, so a little bit more than one-third the width of the strikes, but just a pretty classic setup here for an iron condor. Uh, what are you doing? What is Feb? Feb 90-80 and the 105-115 call spread. So it's a $10 wide iron condor, selling it for around $3.67. Might be trading a little higher than that with this little bit of a sell-off that we've seen uh, pinning that 4,000 mark on E-minis. Volatility unchanged, folks, slash VX. Where'd you get filled here? 367. Yeah, nothing done yet. <laughs> All right. I think this next one you'll like. I don't know if you'll have a position in here. You got a position in Airbnb? No, 370. Because he, he got filled at 370, son. Nice, nice. There you go. Figured you'd get a couple pennies more. Airbnb. So Ivy rank at 36. 
earnings after the February monthly expiration, so you don't have to worry about earnings. Amazon has earnings prior, and you obviously have. Airbnb been on a little tear here, son, too. It, it has been. I'm going with the neutral position, so I'm not taking a directional stance here. Same sort of setup as I did in Amazon, selling around the 30-ish delta for the shorts, going $10 wide. So I'm doing the 90-80 put spread and the 110-120 call spread. I did it at $3.40. Tomas, I, I, Phil, 340. Beautiful. I like it. All right, I got one more for you. Boeing, you got a position in Boeing? I do. All right, Boeing, it's, I mean, it's taking a trip to the moon here. So I'm selling um, a little bit of premium, but I'm going with a put diagonal spread. So in the February 17th, the monthly expiration, 30 days to go to expiration, I sold the 200 strike put. And then in the March expiration, I went and bought the at the money put, the 210 put. So doing a 210, 200 put diagonal spread, March, February. I bought the whole package at $6.15. You got $10 wide spread. So you got kind of like a four or $500 max price profit. Uh, it's pretty much a one-to-one -one sort of risk to max potential reward, but you got a positive gamma and a little bit of short delta. You've been liking these diagonal spreads. I've seen you. Yeah, but they're, they're, tough. They're, they're tough to make money on. Uh, oh, no. Oh. I mean, what the hell did you just do? What did I just do? Um, I knew it was going to be way too complicated for him to figure out. I've I've seen you come over to the to the Nikki. Oh, Bass I did the two hundred five two hundred. I thought you were doing two hundred five. Ah, uh, that's um, our right. four sixteen. Okay, so that's our right. the bone. Actually, so he's a little bit smaller than your Johnny trade. I right? figured. I figured. So oh, six hundred bucks a lot of risk. I actually, oh, 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 look! I I went one strike less than you. Oh, I I didn't know. Um, <laughs> I, oh, oh, it's a little less Saving risk. Base, no, I didn't know. Base. Um, I created the platform and quickies and everything that you just so thought I did, about in your I'm head, not listening to him. I didn't I, know how to work the platform. I did <laughs> Amazon, Airbnb. I was short of strangle in Boeing. I covered it and then did nice. did your trade. Yeah, you got a, you got an Ivy rank of seven. Trade. Almost did his trade. Almost did your trade, but, but the Ivy rank, less. I didn't really, I haven't been looking at Boeing and yeah. Ivy rank is two, so I needed to cover that strangle anyway. For sure. For sure, I like it. I like that adjustment. Adam, Batista's are paying dividends for the Sosnoffs one more time. Good job out of you, my son. Good job. Good job, indeed. We're going to take a quick 90-second break. We got more good uh, jobs coming up with uh, Liz and Jenny next. Peace. Even the S&P's down six.
small square. Because I don't have anything behind me. I can only put it next to me. Oh, yeah. It's nice having the table behind me. Yeah. You're a, you're a, you've got a, you got a lot going on there, Jenny Andrews, a lot going on. <laughs> Oh. Uh, all right, so it's Wednesday. We are tweeting live. Send us your tweets. Include the hashtag L-I-Z-J-N-Y. That's what we're looking at. Tweets that have hashtag L-I-Z-J-N-Y. Second half of the show today, we have What's Your Assumption? The boys, I think, got eight. And I'm not, I don't know that we could beat them today. Don't say that, Jenny. I, <laughs> we beat them two weeks in a row. Two out we, of three. Set up we beat them once, tied them once. Oh, if they beat us today, then it's even Steven. Uh, why don't we take a look? Why don't we take a look, sort by days, and just look at last week's what's your assumption trade? See if there any, how many are left, and uh, if any of them need an, any management. I am in. I am in. Um, days open, so we're going to go to seven. So we're looking at it from here to about here, and let's go over uh, Nvidia. Nope. Lows. Nope. No. Nope. eBay. Nope. And Nope. Nope. All good. That's it. That was it from what's your something. That's it from what's left. Some of them have come off, but that was what's left from last week's what's your assumption. Yeah, some of them have come off. Um it's a pretty interesting day in the market, don't you think? Well, we were Ar off Archer. I opened my account and I was like, Archer Aviation, uh, it's been on a little terror. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have your aviation. I will follow what you're listening to. Yeah, it has 50 cents. Woo! Well, no, but it, we, don't, we only have a small amount of Archer, right? Oh, that's PNC. Oh, God. I was like, what is the Archer aviation? Yeah, um, was, uh, that was what we put in yesterday. I wanted to manage that real quick. So look at that move. Yeah, that's not bad. What kind of chart are we on here? Oh, okay. 20 year. Would, uh, like Would you like to see it all the way back? Wait, wait, wait. That's not right. AC... Yeah, it's a r it's a c a h r i think hold on i'm just gonna hit i was like that's not right let's watch we'll go a c h r there we go okay we go. that looks a little more like it so look where we bought it this is a miracle we bought it all the way down here okay so we only bought 100 shares uh we bought 100 shares for two two dollars so we put 200 dollars into the trade we made a hundred dollars we made um like we i think i think for us in this trade, we should probably close it. We have a hundred shares of two hundred four. Yeah, and we made a hundred. We're up a hundred dollars. Oh, I see what you're saying. Not today, total. So you can see this is a spec. This was. This is how specs are formed. This is one of the uh, other specs. If we want to close it, we can. I'm holding in my oh, account. I'm holding mine, and you're holding yours. But we got in at higher prices, and I would say we just uh, we take our hundred dollars. We're always trying to clean up our account gone it's hard this is why we will never make that much money because we, <laughs> because well, but we're traders in this account i agree with you we are trading we're traders i wanted to look at this because this was our earnings trades from yesterday this was our technical free long position we're out 22 dollars. when i looked at this this morning jenny we were out a lot more like so it it's, opened uh, its low was 149 so it was much lower than this are you surprised with the down eight dollars that the rank is not higher than 12 because i look at this and it's like okay maybe this is not a bad time to sell puts in pnc in march but i would ex have expected with the down move a higher rank um yeah you would think so but no because look go to the trade page and look look at march you can sell those 135 puts for three dollars there are no march oh what was that may was or was may. that Feb still was that still feb nope it was may it was may that was like geez that's a lot i was shocked like 135 puts get three dollars that makes a lot more sense it's may there are no march right which is part of the problem now so come monday everything will have march and this i think we give a wee bit of time too so let's look at our two-day ones this is worth 70 cents still because we got this on for even so if this Ooh, wait, you, you, um, you got to highlight both puts. No, I'm just showing the ones that are expiring in two days. So I'm showing oh, okay. the ones that are expiring in two days and what they're worth. So these are the only things that are expiring in two days. And if this is still, this is worth 70 cents because it's, it's out of the money. Yeah, they're, no, they're in the money. Okay, so these are what, this is what we're playing for. And when it was down a lot, we were out about 170 this morning. So out $24 isn't bad. 
So you can see we've got a 250 wide spread. If you highlight both puts, because the calls are, it's like a moot point, they're worthless. Um, the puts are, here's, we're short the 155 in the two day, long the 152 in the, in the nine day. If it blows through these, then yes, we could be out $250. If it stays right around here, this trade would actually be a winner. Um, that 152 is going to have more value than that 155 as long as we stay like here or higher. That's what I'm saying. I think we're just going to pump the brakes on this. I'm not going to do anything. We've got two days to keep an eye on this. And um, we'll even look at it at the end of the, end of the show today and see if we can close it for even. Yeah, so, I mean, you can't kind of have a choice. Like you could, because now it's now it's um, now it's more of a 50 50. If it continues to go down, well, it's gonna it's gonna lose more. But if it goes up, now it's kind of a 50 50 on movement. So this is what you wanted to happen. If you're looking at a free long, you want it to kind of stay. If you're looking for a free long situation, you yeah. want to. You want it to go to your strike net through. We are through a little bit, but you kind of want it to sit around here. Yeah. So let's just give it, let's just, let's either scratch it. Cause I don't want to put in a 30, like we got it on for a credit. I don't want to. If it's going to get to scratch, that means we're going to be up to 155. And then that's the ideal situation for a free long. For free long, right. So, so let's, we'll close this. We'll take a look at it in a little while. Cause it's going in the right direction. I mean, um, I wouldn't scratch it because then it's like, at that point, that could be a nice winner, but it's it's tricky now though. It's like, okay, now we're just sitting and waiting till oh, Friday. I think in my account, when I do these, Jenny, I'm, I got them on for free. I'm a couple days sitting on my hands. Yeah. Sit on yeah. it, honey. Cause that's why I put them I, in. They're, they're limited risk for me to sit on them. PNC did go beyond its expected move though, because yes. we sold that put. Um, at the expected, move. Yeah, the expected move. And right. actually, if you remember, 250 outside because I was like, pop those out. Right, right. So it did, it definitely did go outside of its expected move. Um, okay, let's, because we do have, what's your assumption next? You, uh, was that yesterday for earnings? That was an earnings trade, uh, same trade, same type of trade. We did it in UL and we did it in PNC. Yes, so let's take a look at this. So you all. We're short the um, 48 put in the two day. And yeah, that's worth 15 cents. And then the 47 put is worth 30. This is right in the middle. Look at this. It's trading 5028. We have the 4853 put. It didn't move. So you all is down. I mean, it moved. It's down a dollar. I get that. But we're up $30 on this. Here's where I like these trades. We made $30. If we were selling a Jade Lizard, we'd make $30. And here we risked only 200 Um and again, do we want to wait till Friday since it's right in the middle of it? Do we want to wait till Friday? They're worth 30 cents. I think we sit on it. Let's yeah, I think we let's wait. Yeah, we're going to sit on that. I see natural gas is down today. Uh, natural gas has been a, not that great. No, it's been, that's been down. You know, what's crazy is take a look at this though. So it's, they're completely inverse of each other all of a sudden. Natural gas down, oil up. Isn't that crazy? I know. And what do we have? We have an MCL. And then I want to get into Twitter because I know we, this is our Twitter segment. Oh, we're out of our MCL. Oh, okay. Okay. And maybe we'll get back in tomorrow during our uh, future segment. Ooh, yeah. We'll take a look at all this stuff tomorrow because we have our natural gas in there too. Um, all right. Do you want to pop into Twitter? Sure. Let me pop in. I will refresh and we're going to go top down, but we're going to see Bob first. Oh, Stuart first, actually, before Bob. Um, hi, Liz and Jenny from London. I'm in your AMC Iron Condor, which is working out. What do you think about putting it on again in the March 17 cycle for around 180? How can it go wrong? Uh, sure, Stuart. Let's take a look. Um, so what is our Feb looking like? AMC, we're up $26 with 30 days to go. And it's through, look, we have that four or five call spread. We took in $1.42 and it's through that call spread. Honestly, it's a big lizard. I don't mind leaving the Feb and putting on the March. Because well, I just want I just want to be clear with Stuart though too, because Stuart, it does go in as an iron condor. I will give you that. It does go in as an iron condor, right? Um, and that's what because that's what it says. This is technically a big lizard because we collected 142 and we've got the four five. So no anywhere to the upside, we're gonna keep that 42 cents. Right. So the big lizard is selling the ethnomony straddle and then buying and out of the buying a call 
and having our collection be equal to or greater than the width of the call spread, which is what we have here. So if AMC stays here, this trade will be worth, we'll make $42 because we collected 42 cents over the call spread width. And if it goes down, great, we could make more at that four strike. So which is why I'm saying like, let's just leave this one. No, there's no harm in leaving it unless AMC goes below our break even on this trade, which is about two and a half. Well, I just want, uh, to, I want to show the visual of what you're talking about. So usually we don't see this, right? So here's where the flag is. So we can actually make a little bit more money. We're only up $30. If it stays right here, anywhere in here, we make 42 cents, right? Because we collected one. Forty-two to Jenny's point, it doesn't hurt us. Anywhere to the upside, we make forty-two. We actually stand to make more money if it drops back down. So I yeah. do not mind layering one on top of this. Yeah, I don't mind. Right. Um, if you go back to the position page, how much or the trade? Yeah, the position page. I'm just curious, how much is it to buy back our short put forty-six cents? And yeah. I would say we leave it all and add on a march. For sure. Um, because seventy-six. I mean, look at the rank in AMC seventy-six. They've got to have earnings, right? They do, if you're going to go to March. But I got to tell you, it's okay because um, it's neutral too bullish. You could probably do it a little bit bigger. I just wonder, I mean, you look at that premium. You look at that premium. Would you rather just sell the three put for 85 cents? I would, but they were, he wanted to replicate the same trade in March. I would 100% want to sell that. But I can tell you, Jenny, yes and no, because look at this. You're taking in a lot of credit. Yeah, yeah, two fifty. Your break even isn't too far away from just selling that eighty three put. And this is only okay. So by so if you're getting two fifty on a two dollar wide spread, and our break even is two fifty, and you're buying that two put, this trade only has fifty three cents in in risk. I can delete this, and then it's going to use it's going to be cash secured. Whoa, and. No, it's more, and, yeah, it's more. And using the two dollars of me, and using the two dollar. Make it try. a three dollar wide. Make it a three dollar wide call spread. If you make it a three dollar wide call spread, you're getting over three dollars. Your break even is down to two. Your break even is down to two. I sort of like having the overage. So this is four hundred dollars. I just want to see. No, if, I you know, I if you I'm leave it, I'm just going to buy the one, and it makes it a dollar. Yes. Isn't that kind of crazy how the margin or the, how the buying power works when now we create an iron condor? Now they call it an iron condor. It's going in as an iron condor. We know it's a big lizard. Um, or that's why we call it a big lizard. So we know what, if I told Liz, put in an iron condor, what strikes? If I say put in a big lizard, she knows what strikes. It, it looks like with this trade, Jenny, it looks like we're gaming the system. It looks like we are gaming. We bought the one put and saved ourselves $300 in buying power. And this trade only has $100 in risk. So if AMC sits right here, great. If it skyrockets, great. We've got $90, $90 over. I, it, I mean, it almost looks too good to be true. I'm just kidding. I'm just, just kidding. <laughs> Let me write this down. <laughs> Where's my notebook? It but it does. AMC. I gotta tell you, Stuart from London is getting a gold star for bringing this to our attention. One I mean, somebody tweet us if there's something going on that we don't know about and the AMC is supposed to go to zero. If it goes to zero, we're out a hundred bucks. Uh, exactly. I'll take my chances. I'm shipping it. It could be bankrupt by the time this is over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to 80 cents over. It's as if we sold that 83 put. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. How wide was that market when I put it in? 84, 74, what's our price point here, Johnny? What is our wide market here? Uh, here, it's a- it's, I got 104, I mean, they're all wide. They're all 20 cents wide. <sighs> Go down to 80, 280. 275. That's 125 in risk, 129. There we go. We'll leave it there. We'll let it work for a minute. Still not filled. Well, it's March. You know, most people haven't, although look at the case. I was going to say most people haven't gone out to March yet. If you want to get filled uh, simpler, it, you could just do a put spread, like the 3-1. But you could. But what for this? <laughs> you could yeah. do the 3-1. That's still 10 cents wide and 1 cent wide. So just, just for, for purposes, I just want to show this. So just using that put alone for the 85 cents is using $200. So if you are going to buy this, it's still going to be about two. Well, oh, yeah. So I would just do three. Like if you wanted to just be bullish, which a big lizard is neutral to bullish, um, just that three put is going to be an easier fill than all the four legs. 
Yes. So what the heck is, I mean, 35 million shares of traded. What is going on with AMC now? Do they think it's going to be another meme stock? That's a good trade too. Stuart, thank you for bringing this to our attention. And we will be in AMC. I just want to pop back into Twitter, see, take a look at what we can get to. Um, Bob, Bob on fire. We love it. Thank you very much. Today's potential earnings trades, AA, DFS, and PG. I don't know what DFS is. Procter and Gamble and AA. And, Anything you know, tickling your fancy? Um, any what? Anything tickling your fancy? I'm not dying to get into any of these. I do like our new trading strategy, though. I don't mind looking at Procter and Gamble um, or Alcoa. I, I kind of, right, I do, I don't, either of these, I think we should be able to do our new strategy fairly inexpensive. Yes. I think you have to go to the 150. That was, yeah, that's what I'm gonna say. You gotta, you gotta bring that in because you got, the one thing I'm gonna say is you gotta get something in what you're selling, otherwise it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And so let's see if we could take minimal risk. Um, you've got the 143, you can buy the 141. 141 and then 150. And then the 152. We're taking in a decent credit. Not bad. Let's, let's do it. <laughs> I mean, our upside is kind of tight because we had to bring it into the 150. So we could you if it doesn't work out like with this with the strikes and the upside, we could just do the downside. It's we're not paying for this. You're spot on accurate. I don't mind the upside, but we aren't paying for it. But so it was I'm... close. We were bringing it in within the expected move. So then we couldn't be surprised if we're like, oh, darn, it's through the call. Well, it's a, it was within the expected move. Nine second credit to the downside. Let's hit it. Yeah, do it. Um, okay. I, I know we said we'd keep a tally of what we're making on these and losing on these. We haven't kept a tally. How's your tally going so far, Jenny? <laughs> But we will at some point go back and look. But thank you very much, Stuart. We're gonna I'll cancel replace that on the break too to make sure that, that we get in. Bob, thank you very much. Um no, and Anthony, is it Anthony or Antone? We're not sure. But I don't, um, I don't know. Hi, beautiful ladies. We'll watch the replay tonight. Make sure you cover the number in the order screen. It goes from a few cents to a dollar depending on you selling or buying an option. Let's take a look at what he's talking about. So go to whatever, go to the trade page. Uh, trade, let's just go back to- in, in the, or, so, And then try to buy an option, sell an option. And and then if change it oh, from- you know what I think, Do you know what I think might be happening, Jenny? What has happened to us before? So- The debit credit on the bottom. The debit, the debit credit. So we're, I think if that's what we're talking about, we're, we look at that all the time and we're very conscious of it. We wanna make sure if we're doing something for a credit, it's a credit versus doing something for a debit. So if you're gonna take a look, and I'm just making extrapolations here, but kind of similar to this. If I sold the 182 here, and then I'm gonna go, I, mean, I know I realize I'm in different strikes, but let's go. So this is credit and it could easily be debit sometimes, right? Is right. right. It only happens if you're, if it's close to even. Yeah. Like if it, it's something that's close to even where debit or credit. It, it flips back and forth, right? Or, but we, or, we don't know. Or what I would say to Anton is um, restart your platform. Make sure you've done any recent updates and restart your platform. I, Anton, I learned my lesson uh, a long time ago. I restart all of my platforms every single day now after all the updates, every day. Yeah, there's so many updates and bug fixes that I would I would restart. I re, On my phone, I just re, re, um, updated the app too, the phone app, because there were just a bunch of updates to that. So constant updates, restart. Yes, thank you very much. Um, and Aaron, hi, ladies. No, no, um, Arun. Uh, so Arun. Arun, I was going to say, I'm super happy to hear oh, Arun because Arun used to be a tweeter. We haven't seen Arun in a while, and he's back. So welcome back, Arun. And do you know where I got that from? Because that's one of Tom's clips. He calls him Aaron. Aaron? <laughs> Welcome, yeah, Aaron. Welcome back, Arun. We can't wait to see you in Houston. Um, can you please review the VLO trade? Perhaps time to close instead of moving to max loss. Let's Arun, look. thanks for the heads up. Let's take a look. VLO. I think we are at max loss, Arun. Okay, so 120, 130, $10 wide, and we took in $6. So our max loss is um, 390, we're at 259. This is, uh, with 30 days to go, I wouldn't, I would just, I mean, we're, we're, we've lost so much on this already. We're not that far from max loss. I, I would, we would leave this. 
we would leave this. We took in $6.12. This is near max loss, yes. So what what you're doing right now, Arun, is it will not that there's nothing wrong with trading this way, but if you close it now, you're just locking in a loss. So the risk on this trade was $3.90 and we're down $2.50. So the worst could be like another $140. I'd rather wait and hope it comes down than lock in that 250 loss on a trade that only has 140 more in risk. And these are, this is an energy stock. So you're taking a look at, you know, and it's all going up. This is energy stocks. They're all going up right now. I mean, what I had a hard time with, and I, mean, I love the big lizard, but what I have a time hard time with the big lizard is management. It's it's hard. There's a, there's not, and we talked about this yesterday with the triple Q's big lizard. The management of the big lizard is tricky because you're already starting with that straddle. Like when you're starting with an iron condor, yeah, you could move one side in. When you're starting with a strangle, yeah, you could roll one side up. When you're starting with the straddle, and you've got two spreads. I, we don't. I don't like inverting these spreads and creating this weird kind of box with those two spreads. It just, it, it's tricky. It's tricky management. It's almost like when you put these on. Yeah, well, you're close to take a lot. Right. But that's why they get managed so quickly because otherwise you're in a pickle, right? So that's why our, our bar for uh, the percentage we want is so much lower. It's so much lower than than usual. Um, Jenny, the so other. If you ever wanted to, and I don't, I'm not suggesting this because I do not want to manage it like this. The one thing you can do is. Hey, we are getting a message um, that someone that from Frank, our amazing um, YouTube manager, it says that he can't see the top of our screen. The top up here? But I, so I'm sitting back as a viewer and I see it. Is it in Twitter? I don't know. I don't know. Um, cause I, I do see it. So maybe, maybe it's, um, and John sees it. So it might be a YouTube issue. Yeah. Maybe it is a YouTube issue. I don't know. Okay. And John says so far, what our producer, John says, everything looks good. So, um, and maybe Frank, maybe Frank needs to restart his computer. <laughs> hey, we've all been there before. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jesus. Guilty, Frank. guilty as charged. Um, okay. Hi, ladies. You might want to close Square. 50% of profit for a naked put. Let's take a look at that, too. I love Square. 41%. Sure, we'll take it. Cleaning up the and, account. And it's down today. And on a down day. The rank is down to two, so. Love it, love it. I think, uh, I think the rank was like a three when we put it on. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> it went down. Um, Evan, risk 181 to make 119. Um, what is, this is a jade lizard. Oh, this has got, a, is this? Is it Etsy or no, what is, what, I can't. BBY. Oh, okay. All I saw was the Y. It's like, what is this? BBBY. Um, let's take a look real quick. So it's a three, six, seven. So. Can we just look at the chart in BBBY? Something happening with all the, the meme stocks. I don't know. So they were, it was three, six, seven. So it's gotta be a Jade Lizard and there. Do you think like when people get their tax return money, all these, um, do you think when people get their tax return money, like all the young, the younger generation who was by getting into all the meme stocks, they'll use their tax return money to get back in? Yep. <laughs> I, have no, I have no idea actually, but maybe. Um, but here's what I was going to say about this trade. No, I'm, once again, if you want to trade this style, that's absolutely fine. If I'm getting a dollar five for a put, I am not buying the cost or selling the call spread. Yeah. J just the put. Just the put. So yeah. unless I'm getting a decent chunk for that call spread and you're getting only 11 cents for that, I would just be selling the put. Yeah, let's do it. It's Feb. It's 30 days. Is Bed Bath & Beyond going out of business in 30 days? Let's get in. Mm -hmm. AMC, Bed Bath & Beyond could both be going. They're back. Out. They're back. I don't know. I just wanted to see earnings don't seem to be on deck. Yeah, sure. Why not? So thank you very oh, much. I see what Frank is sending me a picture, and I, I do see in, in YouTube, it looks like they can't see the symbols across the top, but um, it looks like they're they're seeing the bottom of the trade page, but they're not seeing the top where it has the symbols or the pricing. Of the trade page? Yeah, if you go to the platform, um, the screenshot from Frank is what YouTube is seeing is um, from like positions down, but they're missing the whole top bar. Okay, I'm watching YouTube and I can see the top bar. And so can John McGloin. So I, I think it's like, a, a, a Frank, I just almost think it's an issue. Um, and John, okay, so I think it might be a, 
maybe an issue with Frank's computer. I don't know. I don't know, but I, I, so I will I can say- see it. So I can see BBBY right now. I can see me looking at it. <laughs> well, here's what I'm gonna say. It's 10.33, we're over time. We're gonna take a quick break and look into this. We will be back after the break with what's your assumption and we'll get to any tweets we missed. Stay tuned. Thank you. Welcome back. It is a wild Wednesday, so we go into one of our favorite segments. Burn air. <laughs> Give it to me the music. We've got what's your assumption? Uh, I know we've been trying to beat the boys, but I've got to tell you, I, I don't think we're going to beat them today. It's a, it's with some of these positions we have some of it's uh, it's tough. We'll see. We'll see what we can do. I know. I don't like your attitude going into this, Jenny Andrews. I don't. <laughs> eight out of 10. When have we ever gotten eight out of 10? Hey, there's a day when we're going to get 10 out of 10. Maybe it's today. Maybe it's today. Really we bad. have the buying power. Let's go. Let's get right into it. I haven't it. looked at any of this stuff, so it could be it could be a sad day in Mudville. All right, ready? Let's, let's get right in. What's okay. your Okay. So first up, bucket, BKKT. Okay. Um. This is some kind of a crypto thing. Let's see, swing trade or until Bitcoin goes back to 30. As your apprentice, me, Lord, Tom, and Master Bat, please accept or criticize my asymmetrical risk crypto trade, B A K K T Apex crypto exchange, blah, blah, blah. Like, I mean, I'm not going to read this whole thing. Tom went on, on and on and on and on about how he doesn't like the, the New York Stock Exchange, doesn't like this product, would rather do other crypto trades, but we can trade it by one share. <laughs> yes! I'm talking about Jenny. That is it. <laughs> I mean, you could buy 10 shares or you could buy 100 shares. I, Tom refused to trade it. He didn't want to put his money into this. He's he's not a fan, not a fan. Um, but if someone's bullish on this, you could, buy it. you could buy it. You're not going to trade this. Like, I, you're just, it's $1.80. How many are you buying? About 100. We risked $100. A dollar on one hundred eighty dollars. Okay, we'll see if we get filled. We'll go back in. Hey, um, we, well, you should get filled on that if you're just buying it. How tight was that market? I, we are filled. I I I put it on the bid, not the offer. All right. Well, they refuse to trade it, so we're one step ahead of them. <laughs> one step ahead of the next guy. We got this. Okay. Oh, that's from Aladdin. Yes. AMD bearish. Feb March reverse jade lizard or broken wing butterfly. Edie. Ah, oh, Eddie from Belgium. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, bearish AMD. I love that he gives the ideas reverse jade lizard. Um, the boys did a reverse jade lizard. They you know, don't. we. I, 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 I'm, I'm afraid of the naked calls. I'll tell you that I'm afraid of the naked calls. Uh, yes, yes. It's it just or March. Let's look at March too. Hold it on. just gets our break even so much closer than if you do an actual reverse jade lizard. Oh, I see what you're saying. You you can't do a reverse jade lizard. You have to do a big lizard in order to cover the strikes. There's $5 white strikes. 
Right. Yeah. They did the 75 call. They sold the 75 call. Uh, they were in March. They traded mostly March. So they sold the 70 in March. So this, this, here's what I'm saying. This guy said Feb or March. So I tried it in both. You can only do $5 wides. You can do a broken wing butterfly. But if we are bearish, Jenny, let's get creative. If you're bearish. You could do an earnings setup calendar. There's still time. You do an earnings setup calendar. I was just thinking calendar. Okay. So go to the 65. Move for you got to buy that. You're buying the Feb. If you want to do earnings setup, you have to oh, go sell. The oh, diamond. I was going to go. I was going to play a long game, but we could do the short game. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. Uh, oh well, you almost have to diagonalize it. So sell that sixty-seven 16. and buy the sixty-five. That's. That, I'm fine with that. One twenty-two. There's well, there's three hundred twenty-two dollars in risk. Okay, so you can't. So the problem with this is that you don't, you don't the sixty. You're not getting anything for in the nine day. Um, you can do a diagonal. Just, Why don't you diagonalize it where you like buy the eighty put? Let's just see how expensive this is. I just want to see how expensive this is. So ninety nine cents. If it's not an earnings setup calendar, it's a calendar. It's Feb March down to the sixty five level. Is this bearish? It's five dollars down. You got to put a GTC in. That's a very. I mean, low. this is not. If you're really bearish and AMD goes down, you're not going to make a lot of money on this. It's a bearish trade. Yes, can make some money, but you're never going to make a lot of money. If you wanted more money and you're bearish, what I would do. Let's see what we can do here. With I just did one week apart. Sixty-eight. It's five hundred dollars in risk. No, I don't think you should take downs. I I don't think this. I don't think that's a bearish trade because it could go down and you can lose. You don't want to. We always say this. If you have a bearish assumption, you don't want the stock to go down and lose. I would almost do like a debit diagonal. Let's do a calendar. One eighteen. Sure, sure. And this isn't going to make much. But and this, I wouldn't rec I wouldn't say this is a trade for someone. This is a bearish trade, but make very little. If you want to make more money and you're bearish, I think you have to outlay more capital. If you're bearish, you could legitimately just do this. You could do, you could do that. That's bearish. Right? It's you could set it up like a diagonal and try to get a couple rolls in it. I think it's going to be. Expensive. I, mean, I, I like the reverse jade lizard because it gives you the best break even. Yeah. But it's just, um, it's like you're going through earnings and you have that naked call. How much is it? Uh, how much is the 23 day zebra? Uh, hold on. It's going to be expensive, right? Well, you can go to the 71. You can go to the 71 because that has more extrinsic value. So, so expensive. You got to go all the way down to here. Oh, the seventy six. Yeah. It's a thousand dollars. Yeah. Okay. Bearish. We're not going to make a ton of money. Let's do. Um, let's do a calendar, right? Yeah, we'll put in a. We could, we'll put in an earnings setup calendar, but the problem is there's not a sixty seven strike in the. Oh, I just did it by a week. We're only spending. Oh, sure. Better. Yeah. So this is literally bearish. Earnings setup calendar. I'm putting a GTC in immediately for this to take twenty dollars out of it, even even less. It, that, so uh, it's tricky because I hate I hesitate on like, throwing in a naked call on AMG with earnings coming up. So the calendar's a baby trade. Uh, it won't. If but if you really are bearish, I put zebra buying a put diagonal, selling or selling a call spread. I don't like a naked call through earnings either. Yeah. Uh, okay. UPS neutral. Um, this is from Robert. What about a strangle? Sorry, that moved. I don't know why that did. Okay. What about a strangle? UPS Feb. Feb 17. So you've got earnings. Yeah. Darn it. I can't be neutral through earnings. <clears throat> but you could try to throw in another earnings setup calendar right around at the money. 77 and a half. Well, do you want to do 77 and a half or 80? I'd rather do 80. Yeah, either one. It doesn't matter. It's three fifty for one week. That's crazy. That's new. Okay, and look at the seventy-seven and a half. See how much that was. Three seventy. Mm -hmm. It's too way too expensive for a one week earnings. One week EPS. Yeah, for neutrality. I agree. Jenny, what do you think about this? 
hold on. Now I know it's nine days away, right? I'm right before the earnings cycle. I know I'm nine days away. It's gonna be, it's gonna be expensive. It's it's gonna be expensive. I think it's gonna be expensive too, but I just wanted to see. Okay, so we So you'd have to buy the 170 put. That's 250 away. Oh, it's too, it's not good. And then you'd have to buy the 185 call. Like it, it's super expensive. Okay, I'm closing this. If we have to come back to UPS, we'll come back to UPS. 6J neutral. Okay, now I see your struggles here. Yeah, I'm like, we're never going to beat them today. We just have to like wave the white flag. Yes, we might come back and we might be doing an iron condor and UPS against, against my will. Okay, 6J, what were they in 6J? Neutral. neutral. I mean, I think there's a high rank, 53 rank. I don't, we can throw in an iron condor in 6J. I don't mind. I was just going, uh, wrapping it around a standard deviation. So this Not takes bad. in $175 in, in um, max profit, 450 in max loss. If you make it wide, yeah, I'm fine with that. We're at the expected move, high rank, sure. I wrapped it around a standard deviation. Our max profit is 176. Our max loss is 450, but right now we're only putting up 230. That's not bad. And during the show so far, spoofs have gone from down 10 to down 35. No. They were up this morning. We put that in. We'll see if we can get it from the Japanese end. Oh. Build in BBBY. Boy, you got one. We got two. That wasn't, uh, what's your assumption? Oh. <laughs> That was our assumption from Twitter. Um, wow, from Switzerland, Teresa. Um, silver, bullish, 45 DTE. No, 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 SI isn't uh, silver. It's um, some kind of underlying. Oh, it's not. So this is silver, which she did not put a slash in front of it. Yeah, I think it's just uh, this. Silver, silver it's gate. your silver gate. So silver gate capital. I, unless she meant silver, I don't know. Uh, but I don't know, but I think we should be trading silver gate just in case. So let's take a look. If you're bullish, what time frame? 45 DTE. So you could, this is where you, there is no March. So you'd have there to. It will be on Monday. It will be on Monday. But if I were bullish this right now, I want to see if it's cash secured. It's not cash secured. Not. That's not bad. Look at this. It's a 10 put because it's trading 12. So yeah, that's, that's not bad. It's not bad at all. Like that brings your break even down to here. You know what I mean? Right. So they're bullish. That's not bad. No, it's not bad. I was going to see, uh, but I was going to look at the 12 and a half, 10 ratio spread, but I could see it's even. It's not, you're not collecting anything. I was telling too. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah you, wouldn't, you wouldn't be collecting anything. Um, it's not bad. If it's we, not bad. Sure, ship that. If we can get filled mid and we just did. So there, there we go. go. Silvergate Capital. Thank you, Teresa. I love it, Teresa. Uh, this is a joke. RTX. RTX bullish. I was thinking RSX. I was like, is this a joke? No, <laughs> no, no, no. So it's Raytheon, and uh, you know, I always makes us think of our favorite uh, uh, Dr. Dr. Zayas. Zayas. I was going to say Dr. Z. Um, bullish in Raytheon. If you so I live, I live this, like I live this every day because my husband works with defense products and I, I don't know if I could get bullish because it's like, uh, he's a crabby marching around crabby, crabby, crabby every day, every day, every day, because the government says they're cutting defense spending. Okay. So, so if, if, if the government's cutting defense spending, then that's not good for Raytheon or any of the defense companies. So we're just gonna. So I, I, it's hard to get. It's it's hard for me to get bullish when uh, when I have to listen to like someone crabby every day about the government cutting defense spending. And it's very challenging for me when you're going to spend seventeen hundred dollars on a on a put. Ah, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. And Raytheon at ninety five, but um, but it, it's that's high. Ninety five is pretty high, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, but it's bad. It's not like this is one of those products that it seems to be in, and we can't say what range is up, but I'm going to stay in. Um, but I don't hate Raytheon at 95 and selling puts there, but with the, there's a lot of uncertainty with defense spending right now in this country. Okay. Moving forward. That's all, I, I, that's all I know. That's all I my can't even, that's my I can't even comment. So from our, from our defense spending expert, Jenny, we're going to pass on that one. Um, R-E-T-A bullish. 
high IBR earnings in March, FDA pa panel results on new drug application expected February 28th, selling puts and Feb expiration prior to both events. So, okay, here's the thing. If you want to play something waiting on some kind of um, pharmaceutical company, waiting on some kind of results, you have to just you're you're going for you're going for something big. You're not going for selling. I, I don't think you're going for selling a put because that could go to the, you're gonna it's gonna be win lose. It's almost like a fifty fifty bet. Look how expensive right? it's like, that's a thirty eight dollar product. So I was right. It's almost like um, a fifty fifty bet if you're waiting for this approval. Here's what I was going to show is that a lot of times this is not going to make more sense. You're using $1,600 on a $35 stock to buy a zebra. When I was looking at these prices, I was like, that's crazy. Everybody's yeah. waiting. Right. Everybody's waiting for something. I want to see if it's ca cash secured. I mean, I'll, you know, my, all my years on the trading floor, I traded in Bristol Myers. And as a retail trader, I don't trade pharmaceuticals. And when did they think it was coming out? FDA like, panel results on new drug application expected February 28th. Which is in March. <laughs> so I, even I don't, yeah, 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 I don't. That's not something I like to play with. Okay, we lost. We're I losers. mean, I, I knew we would lose when I heard these because I was like, okay, all right. Why well, stop watching this so we can come up with our own trades and not be so <laughs> but we would say the same thing. Like I would say I don't trade pharmaceuticals. Um, I would say I have a hard time getting bullish defense stocks when the government's cutting ex uh, cutting uh, their defense spending. Yeah. Okay. First soft commodity trade for Tasty Buddy Count. Um, first soft commodity trade. Many weeks. Carol from St. Louis. I'll tell you, my son was in St. Louis over the weekend. Had a great time. Loved it. Loved St. Louis. Went in the arch. Went all around town. How does he feel about mini wheat? <laughs> it's my kids' favorite. See, both my kids' favorite cereal is mini wheat. Is it really? Mm -hmm. I do enjoy a good bowl of mini wheats. You, there. Um, if I'm looking at this correctly, unless I typed it in wrong, which is a real possibility, XW, right? XW. All you can do is buy it or sell it. Yeah, yeah, because that's what Tom and Tony did. They just, uh, they, they just bought it or sold it. So if you're looking at this, let's see, I'm just going to play for one second, see what this is. You're going to put up $1,000 to buy it. Oh, okay, we are for sure losing this game. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> give it the old college try until until 8 of 10, John. I think we won the last two weeks. So this week, we're given to them. Now I'm just throwing in a towel. It's sorry, Jack. We're not even going to. Jack, <laughs> IBM. So IBM, we, I believe we have an earnings setup calendar in IBM. Let's take a look at what we have. It, this has been, I knew this was going to be a rough watch your assumption. We do, and we're leaving it. We, we have a, um, a bearish um, earnings setup calendar, and IBM's down today, along with most everything, it looks like. Yeah, I'm going to buy this right back. Hold on. Here's what we can do. I just glanced. This is worth a penny. We're going to buy that back. We just have the long. Um, let's call it a day. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. We can't, we're never going to just like leave a long that's $6 out of the money and worth $1.24. Why not? This is worth a penny. I'm not going to touch this. Yeah, but I, I think we would close this and say it didn't work. Like the whole point oh, of I this. I don't want to close it for $10. I don't want a $10 loss. We just need a, a smidge more out of this. We could put a GTC in, but okay, this is so a the whole. The whole point of a calendar and when we price them out is when the short expires, if it's still in this range, this long is going to be worth more than we paid for it. The short's expiring and <laughs> it, it the short's expiring and we're not within that range. It's trade didn't work. No, no, no. It's not expired yet. Yet is the key word here. Yet. It's only worth a penny. Okay. All right. So on work. Friday, we have to do, we have to do, some, do something. We could put that. a GTC in for this. I mean, we could leave this. I have no problem leaving it, but it's worth a penny. Sure, close it in on Friday. But, but normally we would never just leave an option seven dollars out of the money that's worth a dollar twenty for night. Unless its short counterpart is a penny. Like that. I'd rather take that dollar twenty and buy a three dollar wide put debit spread if I'm going to stay bearish like that. Well, let's put a GTC in because we we can say it didn't work and not lose ten dollars possibly. Let's just look at it on Friday. I'll leave the long for you. If I'll leave the short for a penny if it makes you feel better. No, no, you can buy it back for a penny, but just um. Let's just take your. Well, if it makes you feel better to have the placeholder, then I'll leave it for a penny. It's a, it's, you know what I'm saying? This is no oh, harm. But no to problem. your point, why leave an option for a penny? What if it does drop down between now and Friday? Is it? Uh, but, but my point is something $6 out of the money worth a dollar 20, you're better off using that dollar 20 to buy a $3 wide put debit spread. 
you're better off using that dollar 26 another way we are out ten dollars on this trade if we want to scratch it we can scratch it if not i say there's a chance in ibm well yeah there's a chance but but you see what i'm I saying like it has to go so far it's almost, it's almost on its job we always hold on to these things until the bitter end that's kind of what you're playing for with these and so we bought that back for a penny now granted it's still got a dollar in it i agree with you but that was you know we're the the short didn't save us anything on Friday, we would have been closing. If Friday, we'd be closing it. So we can look at it on Friday. But to leave something so far out of the money for a dollar twenty-seven, you're better off taking that dollar twenty-seven and and spending that dollar twenty-seven on a put debit spread. That's just I'm gonna. Buy, I'm gonna buy this for a dollar, which will give us a twenty-five dollar profit. Or it'll yeah, it'll give us a fifteen dollar profit. Uh, you it might you might regret it come Friday if if I, I know. <laughs> That's why I wouldn't put anything in. Just we'll look at it on Friday. Okay. Because if IBM's down three dollars tomorrow, then we're making more money on this than 20, 20 bucks. We got to keep it. I wish we could put like a star next to it. But anyway, his assumption was bullish IBM. So we are bearish IBM right now. Um, I, I have a hard time right now getting bullish IBM at one forty. Because you think it's going to one. Because you think it's going to one. I'm always in IBM. I'm all. I'm always in IBM. I'm not right now because it's it ran up. Maybe how high did it get? 152 or something? Maybe I could get back in at 140. Yeah, 152. So I'm usually in this. I'm not right now. It ran through my calls. It, I had the stock. It ran through my calls. You're like a 130 uh, level IBM person. And yeah, 135 level. Yeah, wait, wait. Hey, Jenny, you're a 135 level IBM person right there. You put your money where your mouth is. <laughs> so, so maybe what are the 135 puts in Feb? I don't hate that. I don't hate that. Or even the one thirties, the one, I don't hate that either. The one thirty puts maybe Liz, that one thirty put that dollar 33, that's going to cover the cost of that calendar. This is going to come back to bite us. We have a reverse. I, calendar. We have a reverse diagonal. And then we're long the narrow. Someone's going to work at a phone call being like, what did you fools just do? Like, we will um, say, I know we're short the uh, closer, nearer term. But I probably will get back in on earnings and sell some Fed puts in IBM. But I'll wait till the, when is, when are earnings next week? Yes, they are next week. So here, we'll go back to the trade page. Let me close yeah. this. Yeah, they're next week. So I kind of agree. We're, we've already lost this game, Jack. So um, we're going to, we're going to hold off and put a pin in that until earnings. Uh, Harold, 10 of 10, net neutral, 17 or 45 to 60 DTE, high IVR, decent markets, just watch out for the earnings on 2.9. Yeah, so that's what I see. He's like 17 day, which is almost too short, and then otherwise neutral going through earnings. Cloudflare. That is almost too short. I just want to see how much capital it's using. Oof. 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 $2,800 on a $44 product. Warning, Will Robinson. <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> All right. Harold, we've already it's, it's a failed it's a failed venture assumption today hopefully we do better uh, uh when we are on later today on um well 365 we've already thrown in the towel that's so funny okay um let's let's pop back right, let's pop back in twitter and you might want to scroll down i don't know if we got to everyone who sent in tweets earlier Ooh, look at all that info from frank thanks frank Wow. Thank you very much, Frank. He keeps us on our toes. I love it. Uh, okay, Fazio so was 20 hours ago. Oh, the broken wing butterfly in Lulu. I, I'm glad. I'm happy for you, Fazio. I thought that I saw that. Um, so good for good. I mean, Fazio, she takes risks, right? She takes risks. I love it. Fazio's awesome. We didn't. Did we want to put anything in Lulu? I think we were. We put something in. We did the 300. Oh. We did the 300. Oh, okay. Butterfly. 310, 310, 300, 290. And we just paid for it. We just bought this. If it goes down to 300, we've got 30 days. Yep, 30 days. Um, okay. Let me pop back into Twitter because we've got about three minutes left. So I think we got to everybody there. I'm going to see if I can refresh up here. There we go. Um, take a look. Oh, the beautiful Fazia again. Take a look at FFIE. Cannot get much cheaper. Faraday Futures, an American startup technology company focused on the development of electric vehicles, founded in 2014. I love it. Okay. Thank you. FFIE. FFIE. Can't get much cheaper. Love that. 
No, it cannot. <laughs> You're right. I was like, what price is this going to be? Because I've said that about many products. Can't get much cheaper than this. Um, Guess what? Oh, we have it. Up, Andrews? We, uh, we, have it. we believe in it. We believe in it. But dollar cost average and get another 155 cents. No, pretty. I mean, what happens when to some of these? Will this be off the? It's going to be like DD. It's going to come yeah. out. Um, do me a favor and show me DD, DD Global again. Let's see where it is. DD, uh, D-I-D-I-Y. Oof, down 44 cents. But it's four bucks. Look at these marks. I know. I should have had Logan sell his when I got to five. No. You oh, think I should have forever? I mean, just... Let the kid hold this. It's coming back. It was in Vanetta's news stories. <laughs> <laughs> but it's dumb. Yeah, so. Um, I don't know. Again, it's not easy. It's not easy to trade products that are uh, delisted. No, it is not easy to trade products that are delisted. <laughs> I mean, it is fascinating to me, though, Jenny. Fascinating. The one day I kept giving Jenny, I just kept being like, you know, DIDIY has traded more today than the, the even the S&Ps. I wish I would have held mine. Too bad I got out at three bucks. And it is right there. It is DIDIY and SPY are the two yeah. most liquid products. I, I'm kidding, but this doesn't make any sense. Hey, track out oh, Triple Q. Since we've got the market falling a little bit, are we getting closer, closer? How is that um, Big River Big Lizard? $26 better than it was yesterday, Jenny. It's moving in the right direction. If we got to the point where this was only a $100 loss, um, or getting closer to a scratch, I would have absolutely no problem moving this out to March. Right, we were just adding too much risk when we were doing it before. Um, yeah. In the right direction now. Uh, anything else we need to manage today? I don't think so. Nothing, we got, nothing looks great today. We, here's what I want to happen in 2023. The yield curve trade to, to work out for us, I, we'll just get to sit on that though. When you say 2023, I think it's going to be by the end of 2023. Uh, and then natural gas. What's your, I know you're always a big natural gas trader. What is your, oh, and we have that NG trade. Our yeah. NG can't be. We have, NG, we have UNG, we have VLO. We have every, like we're, we're locked and loaded in the energy department. Uh huh. So what, um, and I'm fine. Like natural gas, it is what it is. I think it ebbs and flows. You know what I mean? I don't mind looking at this. It's got a 59 rank. I'm a slow and steady churner in natural gas. We have the zebra. What do we have here? I'm going to go to our UNG position. We have a zebra. Frank just said when dollar, you know, dollar cost averaging doesn't, is, isn't always a good idea. We, we were, that was actually sarcasm from, from Jenny. <laughs> It's funny though. I know you so well that I know it's sarcasm, but sometimes you say things so deadpan that I don't think anybody knew it's sarcasm. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Um, but here we sold the call. We sold. We've got a zebra. No, we have a zebra and then we sold extra put. Extra put against it. Yeah. So, Yes, yeah, so we've got a zebra with an extra put, so we have 200 shares. Uh, and it was uh, tough. Everyone, I think everyone's caught in natural gas because the rank was so high. So the when the rank was so high, I was selling 16 puts, 15 puts. So I have lots of the money puts in UNG because the rank was so high. Yeah, the rank is still high. 60, a 67 in this current environment is high when everything else is down, right? But when you were selling them, I think it was like a 90. Like, they were high. Yeah, the rank was high. Hi. I think there's a, there's there's a lot of people caught in UNG. It still is though, and take a look at this. So you want to talk about call skew? Um, you're gonna go. It's trading what eleven? So let's say eleven. The nine, the nine is thirty seven cents, and the thirteen is fifty cents. This is call skew at its finest. This means that the the puts are more expensive, and I'll actually change the implied volatility. But does it? I mean, UNG has a drag, right? Um, Yes. So it's not something that you want to just like get long and hold. No, because UNG does have a drag. Yeah. So drag meaning um, 
you're, oh, it's, it's 1102, but you're shifting futures oh. into things. I just glanced up. I'm so sorry about that. Um, but drag means it's designed to kind of come down as it moves more futures in, which is not a buy and hold situation. And on that note, 1102. <laughs> All right. I'll see you at, I'll see you in an hour. Everyone have a wonderful day. If you want to catch another hour of us, we'll be on Wealth 365 in one hour. And remember to trade small, trade often. Laugh with us, learn with us, and watch the Liz and Jenny show. See you tomorrow, everybody. What's up, everyone, and welcome back to the show. This is Option Trading Concepts Live. My name's Nick. Got my man, Mikey Baller, with me as always. And if you want to come join us, hop over to YouTube, type in Taste Trade, come to our channel, give us a like, and subscribe to our videos because that helps us immensely. But more importantly, just come chat with us live because we'll be taking questions throughout the show. Whatever you got questions on from strategies, the concepts, trade ideas, trade management, whatever, just come hang with us for the next hour of the day, my favorite hour of the day, because I spend it with my man, Mikey Butler. How we doing, sir? We're doing good, doing good. Um, was not expecting this little reversal in the market here. I a swift one, but it's par for the course. I uh, rolled my UAL short put forward one week, and ten minutes later, the whole market reversed. Um, and yeah, that's yeah. that's what we're dealing with. But it was nice to see that UAL didn't you know go crazy to the upside. I think we both, a lot of people, did a lot of bearish trades in there, which are now working out. Yeah, yeah, I did a put ratio. I did the March February expiration. So I bought the 50 put in March, sold the 47 in February with the stock opening up about $2.50 ish cents uh somewhere around there. It was right at the expected move to the upside. I was out about 30 40 cents on it. It was a very small trade. I did a buck 72 with this down move. It's now marked at a 13 14 dollar profit right now very small uh, i'm planning on holding in just letting it play out i i assume you're going to be holding yours considering that you rolled that short put earlier this morning probably put you in that trade for another week or so at least so we'll see if that one plays out but yeah it was was a pretty decent size reversal there along with the rest of the market 
Um, I did a couple trades before I get into the market recap in my Johnny Trader account. I went into Amazon and Airbnb, sold iron condors there, pretty delta neutral, selling around the 30-ish delta. Uh, for the short options, going $10 wide on each of those. I went into the February monthly expiration. Amazon has earnings within that time frame. Airbnb looks to be uh, reporting after the February expiration. Who knows if that'll change, but but it does look like it's past that. So might be one to consider if you're looking for a trade that doesn't have any earnings, uh, you know, within that expiration. Some one of the few stocks I found. And then in Boeing, I got a little short delta there, did a put rate, uh, put diagonal spread, bought the at the money 210 and in March, and then I sold the 200 in the February monthly expiration. Ivy rank sitting in the single digits, so figured I'd get a directional trade there. I like your comment. BA has taken a flight to the moon. Very cheeky of you. You like that? I do. Yeah, um, yeah I. Try. I <laughs> I just, I actually uh, rolled, so like we talked about, I rolled the UAL put diagonal when it was almost two points higher. Uh, I just rolled the short option from the 48 and a half to the 49 and a half. When I did this, the short option was worth like eight cents. And uh, I just wanted to keep the trade alive, reduce basis a little bit. Um, and 40 cents was de decent enough. And I moved it into a three point wide diagonal spread with a basis right around $3. So and your long options, the 52 and a half. Correct. In, in fact, March. or in March, March, in March. Yeah. All right. So you got a lot. Uh, yeah. Plenty of time. Uh, and you know, the only way this doesn't become a winner is if UAL just never goes below 50 from here. Don't, and don't jinx I just it. jinxed it. Yeah. <laughs> but my, uh, my better trade in the morning, I, I saw XOP was up. I saw the entire market was up. So my first thing that I checked on was that put ratio spread that I did. Mm -hmm. Um, so the last put ratio that I entered into was a 135, 130 in Feb. And that was on the put side. And I got into that for $1.72. We've talked about before how the more credit you pick up on the trade entry, the easier it is to turn it into a free butterfly. Um, so if I had made this wider and gave up the credit, I wouldn't have been able to make this adjustment. Uh, but this morning, uh, XOP rallied. It was up like two, three points. And I looked at the 125 put. So since this is a 135, 130 put ratio, if I go and I buy the 125 put, I create a symmetrical butterfly. And I did that this morning for a dollar two. So I collected $1.72 up front, paid a dollar two to create a symmetrical butterfly, remove the buying power, take off the risk. And that basically locks me into a 70 cent credit symmetrical butterfly that's five points wide. I like it. And you got I'm 30 turning minutes. into you is what I'm trying to say. I know. Well, you like the little lotto ticket shot. It's fun yeah. to have those on. And, you know, if they work, it's it's uh, a much bigger uh, profit than four or five of those, you know, making 80, 90 cents. Yeah. You know, then closing them out. It's it's nice to have them on and, you know, high upside, low risk in terms of what you leave on the table. You're leaving 70, 80 cents on the table. You could potentially make five, six bucks. So um, it's a nice little trade. Indeed. As Mikey was saying, E-mini S&P 500 futures down 32 points here. We're at 39.77, about four or five points off the lows of the day. It's been a swift move lower. Looked like we were going to have a, a continued rally this morning. We were above the um, 4,000 mark, uh, and we have been for the past uh, couple trading days. Got up to 40.33 was the high of the day, so about a 60-point turnaround here uh, in the middle of the day. NASDAQ down 75. You got the Dow down 378 and the Russell down 13. So the Russell or the E-minis and the, and the Dow, the weakest of the group, but everything down between three quarters and one and a quarter percent here in the middle of the day. Oil catching a bit forward slash CL 81.23. It's had some two-sided action today. It got as low as 80. 82 and as high as 82.66. So a little bit of a rally in oil. You got volatility finally picking up forward slash VX 21.42 up 50 cents. You got the VIX above 20. We talked about that last week. It's been a, a short time frame that we've stayed in the teens and we're back in the 20s here, um, you know, out of that 
out of that lower bound of volatility. Bonds up over a full point. You got gold and silver uh, basically on change. Gold's down a buck, silver down 33 cents. And then Bitcoin has had some two-sided action today. It got as high as 21.7, which is about six or 700 bucks higher from here. It actually just rallied four or 500 bucks uh, in the last 20 minutes or so since we started the segment uh, got as low as 24 uh, 20,460 uh, but staying in that 20 handle pretty big move yeah it's had a crazy move uh from relative to what we've seen before um yeah. from 17 and a half up to 21 in three trading days pretty big rally for sure but uh yeah. the market is reversing as we speak yeah, a couple other quick trades that I did this morning. So in Tesla, I had those broken wing butterflies on the downside, if you remember, around the the 40 handle where they or actually I had them at the 50 handle, the 150 handle, 10 by 20. I got assigned on um, the one of the shorts or two of the shorts a week or two ago something like that this rally in tesla i got totally bailed out on this and by bailed out they're still losing positions probably like four or five hundred dollar losses on both these positions but with the move back into the the 130 handle i made back six seven hundred bucks on one of those spreads so ended up closing those out this morning it ended up being a good close but i took the risk yesterday with the with the stock trading around 130 and my, one of my long strikes right at 130 i took the 50 50 shot into today got totally bailed out in the morning so i ended up closing those out uh in roku i closed out of that position you got a little bit of a buying power expansion there in roku so i had a strangle on i closed out of that it was using about two grand in buying power so it's getting pretty big for my position and i basically scratched out of that position which was uh, fully in the money, you know, about a week ago, Roku's had a nice little rally there. And then I rolled up a put spread in Qualcomm. That was a trade I got from the chat. Um, it's basically a flat position, but very tight, you know, $5 wide iron condor there. So not not too much going on there. There you go. Like it. I like it. Cool. Um, so today is wednesday january 18th we have uh, a bunch of earnings that are coming up over the next two days and mm -hmm. tomorrow is three trade ideas and tomorrow has some of the bigger ones so we decided to go through uh an earnings preview for the four ones that we are going to focus on mm -hmm. namely netflix uh alcoa slb which is one that i've never traded before and then Procter and Gamble. Um, so we've got a little preview like we've done before for each of those. I also threw in the link uh, in the YouTube chat. If you want to join us on the YouTube side of things, just head over to the Tasty Live YouTube channel. We're streaming live there. Um, but I pinned the article, the Netflix earnings preview article to the top of that chat if you want to check that out. Um, but yeah, let's get into it and we'll get into cool. some trade ideas. Maybe I'll throw on something in Netflix a day early. Um, we'll see. Yeah, I've got, I've got tons of buying power on the sidelines. So, so you're ready. You some, yeah, I'm ready for the trade ideas. If you got some, send them our way in the chat, and we will get to those shortly. Glorious. Okay, Netflix earnings preview and some other ones. Um, but for an SEO standpoint, Katie, Katie will be very happy with me that I'm I'm focusing on Netflix on this one. <laughs> well, you you wrote a nice little article. I retweeted you on that one. Uh, a published scholar, our Mikey Butler is. Hey, try. We're, we're trying to get that uh, article to the top. So yeah. if you would click on that, take a little read uh, of it, and um, yeah, like and subscribe if you would. But yeah, Netflix Ivy Crush preview. This one is actually significantly. Um, better than I would have expected. And I don't know if you're surprised by this too. What are your thoughts on this? The the ratio here, this hey, expected move being massive. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. You've had, you've got kind of the whole stirring of the pot going on in the tech names here going into earnings. Everybody kind of is pessimistic about all the earnings coming up. So it's not shocking to see, you know, relatively high front volatility here in Netflix. I'm leaning a little short. I've got an iron condor here. So I'm kind of loaded into this with the uh, January expiration. So two days ago till expiration, but um, not, not shocking to see a higher implied volatility here. 
Yeah, I think for me, um, this is one where I'm also going to lean short because I'm a perma bear now. Uh, really? But that's a new development. So when did this happen? Well, this happened when I wrote that article because I was looking at the previous uh, earnings announcements and the numbers they reported, and they were like blowing it out of the water, blowing it out of the water, blowing it out of the water. And now you kind of have this uh, murkiness and like you said, the pessimism. And I feel like if they don't report very good numbers, it could be a catalyst for maybe a little sell-off. So. You got to remember though, they move, they always move the goalposts. Yeah. You know, like that's, that's the thing is you move the goalposts, you have lower expectations and then you beat those lowered expectations. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I still have a bunch of bullish positions in my portfolio. I have a neutral position in that MES straddle. Um, so I don't mind throwing in a, a neutral to bearish position that is going to give me a massive cost basis reduction, uh, by way of this earnings announcement. So for Netflix, we're looking at the two-day cycle here in this uh, orangish, yellowish rectangle, January 19th after the close tomorrow. So this is another uh, another one where you're going to get that instant vaporization of extrinsic value if you have a short option in the two-day cycle. And then you look at these back months, and they're all around 50%. Of course, these back months can crush, uh, but I don't really see – I don't. we haven't really seen Netflix go to like – 30% or under 30%. So I just don't see a massive crush in these back months here. So I'm definitely going the calendar diagonal route. Netflix is a little expensive. So I'll probably go with a put calendar here, uh, especially because you don't necessarily need to take all of the Delta uh, risk or get that directional when you have such a massive expected move in the short option. Uh, with two days to go relative to the back ones. The, the more we can collect in the short, the less directional we need to be to still have a nice setup uh, from for earnings, if that makes sense. Um, but this is the best, this is the highest one. I shouldn't say best, but this is the most you're going to see on this preview in terms of the implied volatility in the two-day cycle relative to March. And we don't really necessarily look at the number. The number is huge, but... I, I like to focus on the expected move relative to the back month's expected move. I think it's a it's an easier way to kind of compare and contrast the the next ones we're going to talk about. So, twenty eight percent, twenty eight points, almost thirty points relative to fifty points in the fifty eight day cycle in March. That's a big uh, ratio for the weekly relative to the monthly. So really like the way this sets up for a downside or upside calendar diagonal, uh, just because you're going to be able to reduce your basis. If you're selling an option in the two day, you know, aggressive manner relative to, uh, March. Someone actually asked me on Twitter for the UAL trade. Why did I go to March instead of February? Um, and, Anytime we can add time to our long option that we are buying, it just softens the blow if we're wrong and it gives us more time to be right, but it also helps us get away from this IV crush. So you can see here in Netflix, 60% and then these back months are in the 50s. If you have a long option in February with 30 days to go, you're absolutely going to see a vol crush there and that's going to hurt you in terms of maintaining extrinsic value all even though buying an option in february will be less expensive than buying an option in march but you get it, what it you also do. had relatively low implied volatility so if you looked at ivy rank yesterday in ual it was relatively low i can even pull mine up from yesterday yeah there wasn't this big of a differential in ual so um yeah it was, an, it was a 14 ivy rank so you had volatility yeah. relatively flat in the back. It was really just a matter of of how much you were willing to to pay for those options. I think the when we looked at the fifty strike, which is the one that I did, I think it was about a ninety cent difference or eighty cent difference between February and March. And the the option itself was, you know, it's basically unchanged right now, but it's trading at, you know. Two dollars and eighty, two dollars and ninety cents here. So, for another twenty or thirty percent, you get doubled the time, right? And that was because volatility was relatively cheap. Exactly. And this one, um, this one, when you see IV a higher number in Fab relative to March, it just it makes us even. It makes us go to March even more because 
uh, you're avoiding the IV crush if you go to March instead of February. And because there's an IV uh, inflation in February, the cost to go to March is even lower, the cost difference relative to February, where you're getting twice the amount of time, but instead of paying 30 or 40% more, you're probably only paying like 20% more, something like that. I haven't looked, but we can do that in a second. But yeah, this one looks good. I'm probably gonna go with a put calendar here. All right, we're both leaning short. You know yeah. what that means. It means it's going down. That's what <laughs> it means. Um, AA, one of our favorite products to trade, low price product, high implied volatility perpetually gives us the ability to uh, stay in these trades for a long time, manipulate the strikes, whatever. Uh, plus or minus 352 for this announcement. This one is after the close today. So today would be the, the time to trade it if you're trying to trade it. Um, but this is another one. You have a good 50% ratio expected move from the weekly to March. So again, just looking at 350 in the two day, what is March? You're looking at just over $7. So just shy of 50%, but right around there. That's kind of what we like to see if we're doing these kind of strategies, because it, it ensures that we're getting a nice cost basis reduction in the two day relative to the option we're buying. And this one is, uh, you know, if you want to go to fab, I think you can, but if you're trying to give yourself as much time as possible, avoid the IV crush as much as possible, going to March instead of fab is going to help you do that. Yeah, it's a tough one just because volatility is so low. Yeah. You know, you got to be directional. You can't be, you can't do strangles or short put, short call, call something that, like that because volatility is just not, it ain't right. It ain't right. And there's actually one that we're going to talk about in a couple minutes that is just absolutely not right. And I will not be trading it. But it's a good right. example to look at in terms of what, what we don't want to see for an earnings announcement. Oh, and here it is. Okay, so SLB has really liquid oh, well, markets. Did a little put diagonal spread in Alcoa. There you go. There you go. So we're both super bears. Nice. Um, SLB got a weak market today. I mean, you got to figure that spills over to, into some of the earnings. That's fair. That's fair. Mm -hmm. Um, SLB, we're looking at a January 20th before the market opens. So Friday before the market opens, um, this one, very low expected move differential when you're looking at the weekly to Feb or even the weekly to the back months. So just looking at this, like when you see a dollar 65, uh, it's really not much movement projected at all. But then when you compare it to February, dollar 65 to 435, that's not even 30%. Um, and we're I'm, I should, not 30%, it's not even 50%. And we're looking at two days versus 30 days. When you look at these 350 versus $5, that's over 50%. Netflix 30, 30 points relative to 40, that's 75%. So when you see a situation like this, where you can't even get to 50% going out 30 days, uh, it just tells you that there's not much premium to be collected in this two day cycle, regardless of what you're doing. And I think this one, these are the kind of situations that we typically uh, avoid for earnings because if you're selling premium, you're taking a lot of risk and you're not getting paid for it. If you are trying to set up a diagonal calendar, you're, it's the same scenario. You're not collecting enough in the two day to reduce your basis on the long option. Um, so these ones are the ones where we typically are going to uh, stay on the sidelines and just see what happens. It just doesn't doesn't really set up well for short premium component strategies uh, when there's just not much premium to be had. Mm. And if there's a surprise, now all of a sudden, uh, if you're directionally wrong and there's a surprise, or if you're like selling a strangle in here and there's a surprise, now you're in trouble and you didn't have a lot of credit to begin with. So these are the ones we'll probably avoid. Yeah, I agree. PG looks okay though. Um, PG, expected move plus minus four points. Uh, this is January 19th before the market. So today is the last day to trade this. Uh, and this one is baseline IV, 24, 23% across the board. IV is already in the 20s. We've talked about this before. Like this is kind of your, your hidden gem where how low is an equity is IV gonna go? It's, it's likely not gonna go into the teens and it's already in the low 20s. So this is one where if I were to hang my hat on a comparison of all any of these, 
what what might have the lowest IV crush in terms of a percentage point crush? Probably PG, because it's just already extremely low. Yeah. But you're still getting this nice ratio where you're collecting the premium relative to four point expected move. Uh, and you're over 50% if you compare that to March. Got to be directional with that one, though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's there's, it. There's the, the tab. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love my tabs, let me tell you. It's okay, me too. Good stuff. All right, so let's look at YouTube? Netflix. So wait, what did you do in uh, AA before? All right, so I did two. I just did two trades. So... If you remember, we had the, I had that data dog position. We did we sold a strangle in the January expiration, and then I bought the same strike call in the February expiration. It was kind of like a short put with a call uh, calendar spread. Somebody suggested in the chat. I peeled off the strangle and and turn the upside into a long call spread, and basically did it for a scratch, right? We've had a nice little move in Datadog, so I ended up selling a call spread against it. I turned it into a free butterfly. So I have the 75, 80, 85 butterfly on for about 80 or 90 cents in credit. So that was the first trade I did. The second trade I did was Alcoa. I went into the March expiration. I bought the 55 strike call uh, or the 55 strike put and sold the January 52 strike, the, the two day against it. So I sold the two strike at like 75 cents. I bought the, the 55 at you know $4 and change. So I did the whole package at $3 and 78 cents. So you're, you're buying the spread for a little bit over the width of the spread, but I'm I'm assuming that unless we have a, a major move to the downside, if we get like a, you know, expected move to the downside a little bit outside that i would still be fine because that 55 is going to hold some sort of extrinsic value yeah i just you know, pushed like, yeah I pushed the expected the move is is three and a half dollars so you'd need a two or three x move to the downside to to really you know miss out on profits yeah i uh i pushed this expiration analysis to friday which assumes this premium goes to zero. And then I put in a 5% crush going from 56 to 51. Yeah. Uh, so this could be what you could be looking like um, if you get those those two to come to fruition. If yeah. there's not much of a crush. It's a $100 there. swing yeah. in either direction if you're right or wrong in the short term. Yeah. Um, I dig it. Let's... Uh, Let's check out Netflix. So generally, we'll wait till tomorrow with Netflix. But with the market sliding and Netflix sliding, I don't mind getting into it today. Mm -hmm. You'll collect a little bit more in the short option if you get into today relative to tomorrow. But if you're trying to uh, place your strikes at a specific position, like at the money or at the expect to move uh, accurately, then I would say waiting till tomorrow is going to help you do that, of course. But... Uh, let's just check this out. So 30 point expected move relative to 50. There's going to be a ton of premium here. And before we do that, let's just look at the cost analysis to further explain why we're, we're going out as far as we can, generally speaking, especially when there's a little uh, IV increase here. Hmm. So if we just look at like the 300 put and the 320, so like at the money versus out of the money in Feb, and then we look at the 320, 300 so oh no let's uh let's do that there we go just so you can see the prices yes um okay so this is a great example so the 320 put at the money for the 30-day cycle you're paying twenty. you're paying two grand to go twice the amount of time, almost 58 days relative to 30, you're only paying another $3 and change. So 15% uh, more to get 100% more time. These are the, this is a great example of like why I would never go to a Feb here and I would always go to March just because we know Feb is gonna have a bigger vol crush than March uh, and there is going to be a vol crush in Feb. There might not be one in March um given the fact that the rest are baseline there probably will be in march but it's absolutely not going to be as big as the feb one and then you look at out of the money 
1150 relative to 15 and again you're paying a small percentage portion in additional cost but you're getting twice the amount of time uh, so when we're doing these strategies we want to get away from the iv crush with the long option and get as much time as possible while still keeping the cost relatively low um, and we want to maximize the short options implied volatility crush ability to get all the extrinsic value as fast as possible that's how these strategies uh, become very efficient so no chance i would go to feb here i would always go to march here if i can afford to do it um, and if you can't afford to do it and you're like kind of forced to go to feb it doesn't set up as well so yeah. maybe i would do something else but um yeah that's that's kind of the gist of it so Let's go to the expected move here in Feb, or sorry, the two day. So we're looking at like 290, 295. What do you think? Maybe go right at it. Yeah, right at the expected move, or maybe if you want to be a little bit more directional, you go to the, you know, the 290 strike. Mm -hmm. Not not a huge difference. Yeah, um, I'm gonna go. With, I'm gonna go with this. So. Typically, we'll we'll focus our strikes on the expected move of the announcement. So going to the 295, that brings you right to the expected move. Uh, and then in March, you're going to be well within the expected move, which is good because that means that if there's a non-movement in Netflix, you'll still be within the expected move. This option will hold on to value, et cetera, et cetera, where the two-day will get vaporized and go to zero pretty quickly. Yeah. So just looking at this, construction here i'm buying this option 295 put for 1380 selling the 295 put for 440 that goes to zero extrinsic in two days so when you look at the analysis and we can do the same thing let's uh bring it to friday january 20th and then let's just bring this down like six percentage points let's bring this down to 45 percent so if, if we get an eight percentage point contraction in the March cycle, which is possible, um, this is a pretty conservative view of what we might expect given a, a large ball crush here. We're still looking at a solid return on capital if we get any sort of downside move or even a flat move. So this can be positive in terms of PL, even if we get a non-move just because this long option is gonna hold on to value, the short option is going to zero. Yeah. So I like the way this sets up. So now watch it. it move. In, now watch it move in hundred points. Um, Could happen. Four times the expected move to the upside. Yeah. Put that a, a, a half a delta, a one delta. Yep. Um, so yeah, I was told at nine thirty, and we'll see what happens. Ideally, we get a, a neutral to bearish move in Netflix. Um, but we don't need it to go. We can accept it going below 295 too, because this is just a pure extrinsic value trade. We just want all that op all that premium to come out of the two day and to have our 58 day uh, have over $900 of extrinsic value, regardless of where the strike is. I like it. All right. Shall we defer to the YouTube chat? See if we got any trade ideas here. Yeah, I see uh, Stonk Messiah referencing RSX. Still no movement on that. That thing is still halted. So who knows what happens with that? It's probably going away if anybody still has positions there. Mm -hmm. um, TSM. Yeah, the, the chip stocks have been relatively strong. Um, I think Nvidia is down now, and so is AMD. But they've they've had a nice little rally over the last two weeks or so. AMD going from sixty to seventy one ish, and then Nvidia going from you know one forty to one seventy five. Pretty pretty decent moves. Yeah, um, John. Hello. When do you start rolling up the untested side of a strangle? Uh, when it breaches or when it breaches the tested strike or at a certain delta. Typically, we will wait until the strike is breached, um, or if the value of that untested side just goes really low. Like if you get, if you've, if you're only seeing like 10% of the value relative to what you sold it for, it's not hedging anything. It's just, it's just mm -hmm. there. It's not helping you. So that's another consideration. But generally speaking, we're more of uh, hands-off traders. We'll, we'll wait until we're tested and then evaluate. 
Yeah, I would say somewhere between 50 and 70 deltas. Yeah. You know, when you get to that point on one of the, the strikes, that's where I'd be rolling up my, you know, if you're test on the call side and your call goes for, to a 70-ish delta, I would roll up to something like a 30 delta on the put side. You cut the whole thing in half, but you're still leaning a little bit directional. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think of selling two E-mini one-day options at 15 delta and going long one E-mini contract? So like a covered call type position? Yeah. Um, um, you'd ha you'd have an extra call there. Yeah, you'd have an extra undefined risk. I would rather just do one to one and give have a little bit more time. Yeah, to avoid avoid a situation where if there's a big reversal, now you're seeing losses to the upside on a trade that was pretty bullish to begin with. Yeah, you've got some buffer though because you're yeah. you have the static delta there, and assuming these, you know, if you're trading them at the fifteen delta, you have a lot of upside room, uh, you know, to be right. Mm -hmm. It's a capital intensive trade, very directional. XOP keeps rallying. Any thoughts on a brokering butterfly to the downside? I do not currently have an XOP position. I think this is the first time in wow. many months. I had a strangle in there. I had the 121.50 strangle in the February expiration. I peeled that off at $3.56. It was a $100 profit. You just got volatility just getting smashed in there. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm kind of waiting for a little bit of a pop in volatility, and then I'll get back in my XOP butterfly madness. Yeah. Um, I've been starting with ratio spreads and then converting them. It's just it's easier because you can keep the credit uh, pretty high to begin with. But I don't see any issue if you wanted to do something here. The markets are liquid. Um, even though IV is low, 38%, you can still squeak out a 5 by 10 uh, so it's really up to you. Yeah. Um, Hendo, p &L on Theo uh, on the app versus desktop. Desktop, you'll you'll have more flexibility for now, but. Yeah, I think uh, they're working on that for the mobile yeah, app. Definitely. How about a Tesla put diagonal spread, buying at the money in March, and then, you know, selling something out of the money in the February. Do you have any interest? I I should have closed my my leftover long call that I had from a call diagonal spread that I put on a couple of weeks ago. I had the 140 call. It was actually profitable. Now I'm down about 100 or 200 bucks on it now. But what do you think about getting a little bit of short delta here into the move that Tesla's had? I don't mind it. Are you, are you? Oh, so you're. I was gonna say, is what it was the bottom put in? I know you were waiting for the bottom. Did we get the bottom or no? Well, we're we've rallied pretty pretty far from the bottom. We're yeah. we're at a thirty point rally from the bottom. So well, that's what I'm saying. Is the bottom in? Is that it? Is a hundred? You know the spot. There's some people saying that Tesla's going to single digits on the Twitter Twitter sphere which is kind of crazy but um one thing i will say is i do like going to march for sure for all the reasons we just talked about in netflix but i don't i don't really think you need to go to feb uh i think you can go to the nine day because you have a 19 point expected move in feb 14 point expected move in the nine day because this is the earning cycle um where you're going to get that pure crush so i would probably go march nine day if i was setting something up because for, for the same reasons we're pushing our long options to, to March, let's say you're looking at the 120 strike to sell. If you look at the nine day versus Feb, um, you're collecting 350 relative to 660. So 50% of the value, but one third the amount of time. So your IV exposure is pushed up into that nine day cycle. So. Uh, if you want to go to Feb, you can, if you want to collect that extra premium. But if you're trying to hit both um, after earnings, the nine day can help you do that. Got that call skew pumping in into Tesla here with this move. I know, it's crazy. Crazy. I feel like I, feel like I should take off my long delta and roll to like a neutral delta position. So I'm thinking maybe I just sell out of my 140 long call that I have and then put on like a 15 or 20 point wide iron condor, kind of take off some of the 
extrinsic value risk, just that long premium that I have that's certainly gained value over this 30 point rally and roll it to, you know, a more neutral position, not not as directional. I think that kind of makes sense. Yeah. Um, that example I just showed, uh, the 125, 120, I, I didn't realize that it was, that was like an $8 debit. So we, we got to keep the debit under the width of the spread here. So probably something more like this, 125, 115 or 130, 120, something, something like that, uh, gets you right up against that spread width in terms of debit paid. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I don't mind it. I'm definitely going to do something like this for earnings, but I'm going to wait until earnings. All right. That's what I did. I sold. The 155, 170 call spread, so $15 wide, and then the 105, 90 put spread. It gives you a break even down around the low of the year. And, you know, obviously it's been it's been significantly higher, but uh, it's around a 25 delta on the upside. And then I'm going to close out of this long call. Um, Desmond, is there an auto updating quote that shows the value of E-mini movement versus SPX so that we can estimate the value of SPX before the market opens based on the futures from the overnight? Uh, so yeah, uh, Stonk has it right here. If you just look at the SPX options chains, they will actually kind of tick around where they should be ticking yeah. uh, prior to the market opens, mar market opening. So you'll you'll see these numbers kind of ticking around before SPX actually opens and you can see where the numbers are kind of equivalent like these ones they're all trading for around the same level which is where SPX is mm -hmm. you can do that for the VIX too yeah like the VIX the VIX spot price is different than the VIX futures but if you go out to like March you can see just by looking at the values, okay, these are all the same or roughly the same between 22 and 23. And you know that the VIX is, uh, the VIX futures are around this level, even though the VIX is not. Yes. It's kind of funny how we just stopped trading the VIX just because it's so annoying to do this. <laughs> I know it's, it's not a, it's not a tradable product for, for us really. Yeah. And it's really made for just pure short-term speculation. Yeah. Buying calls, buying puts, that sort of thing. Can't trade any spreads in there. Here's a good question from Juan. Can you roll back the UAL put to the 48 and a half strike uh, for sure. more or less than the 40 cent credit I received earlier? So you could if you wanted to. Yeah. Uh, it would cost you though. It would cost you for sure. Yeah. If I if I bought this back and then I moved it back to the two day, um, I could do that for fifty cents. So I collected forty cents. I would pay fifty cents to do it. So it would cost me ten cents net net to move it back to the two day, um, which isn't that bad. No. But if we moved to if we moved it back to the forty eight and a half. So if I reversed the trade that I did, now it's costing me eighty cents. Um, so that's the difference. I I basically lost a 40 cent credit additional by rolling at the time that I did and then watching the market completely reverse. Yeah. Um, but it's not the end of the world any, either way. And that's because you're getting your, you'd be getting more short Delta here into a move lower. Mm -hmm. You know, you're taking Delta off the table. Yeah. Um, but I'm fine with where we're at. I've got plenty of time in the long option in March. So I don't really, I don't need to, you know, go crazy with aggression here. If I was in Feb, maybe I would do something like this just mm -hmm. to kind of speed up the trade. But because I'm in March, I, I don't, I don't really need to do this. Um, um, access P margin versus spy. I did not notice that it's, but they're about the same. From what I'm seeing, about seven grand if you're naked. Are we back in the DWAC? Is that what's happening? Is this the is this the opportunity to get long DWAC? I, I just saw a tweet come come through my feed that said the Don is coming back to Twitter. So I don't know. Isn't this dead? Haven't they? Don't don't these specs have to like find an acquisition in a certain amount of time before they have to like give back? The capital, yeah. I, I thought they have like a, a like six months or a year or something like that. 
I don't know. It's a good question. Um, BA put diagonal with a 190 short strike. What percent of max risk would you fellas use as a TP? Mm. So for mine that I did in my Johnny Trader account, I went into uh, the February monthly, I did the, I sold the 200. And then I went into the March expiration, I did the 210. And it cost about six bucks, six dollars in. What did I do this at? Um, six dollars and fifteen cents. It's trading at six forty right now. So that was how much risk I was willing to put into that one. I, I don't mind in this account going, you know, another five dollars wide maybe, and using about a thousand bucks. But the width of the spread is roughly my my profit target. Right, and this this is a good example of like just the general idea of these setups. So if your short option has a lot of time left your debit, you want your debit to be well under your width here. So this is $10 wide, paying $6, beautiful. That that tells you that if you get the downside move, it doesn't matter if your short option increases in value against you because you have $4 of intrinsic value profitability here. But if you were in like the two day in March, you, you have the ability to go up to $10 here. Like if you have a $10 wide diagonal and you're paying $10, you can still profit uh, well over the intrinsic yeah. value because your short option extrinsic value is going to zero and your long option is going to maintain extrinsic value. So the, the closer your short option is to the long in a trade like this, the more we want to pay under the width of the spread, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, Scanning, scanning, scanning. Why does April monthly Netflix uh, IV have a 33% number? Yeah, I was looking at that one when I actually, when we were looking at the slides, it was just stood out to me, but it looks like they just opened this up and there's very limited strikes. So I'm guessing it's just a funkiness with the amount of strikes because you can't really, they, there's only so many strikes here. You, you, it's probably hard to, to compute yeah. that into the black shoals model yeah we don't even you don't even have deltas that go to one yeah. deviation here with yeah. the strikes available good so, good point there you yeah. go that's what i'm i'm guessing i'm sure they'll open up more over the next couple of days probably once that january monthly expiration rolls off you'll get all the strikes in april i'm, mm -hmm. I'm not sure why it's so limited here mm -hmm. very odd um but yeah it's still more expensive the 320 in April is more expensive than the 320 in March. So there's no like ARB opportunity here. Yeah. Um, let's see, let's see. JXN, annuities company, they have insane financials. March 40 calls are thick with two C's. Could also be long stock, price target 42. I've never traded this, I don't think. Yeah, I've never seen this. Yeah, I definitely have not. Um, Markets are wide, too. It doesn't look very liquid. Yeah. You can look at the, yeah, the, the February, you know, volume and open interest is single digits. Yeah. Might be a stock play instead of a options yeah. play. Yeah. We're trying to do it. But yeah, we typically have, we've typically avoid these ones that don't have many earn, many expirations just because it's a sign of illiquidity. Yeah. Uh, cat brokering butterfly. Okay, here we go. I've got a little short delta in there already. I've got a put diagonal in this account, and then I've got a short call spread in my Johnny Trader account. Short call spread sitting at the 260, 270 range. And then my put diagonal here, I have the 240 in February with my January rolling off the table here. Um, so if you're worried about assignment or uh, assignment risk due to the dividend, the dividend was a dollar twenty, or it is a dollar twenty. So you're fine. If you have short options here, uh, actually, I, I take that back. You are not fine. But when is the X dividend date? Uh, Should have been today. X dividend? No, the 19th tomorrow. Oh, yeah, yeah, 19th yeah, tomorrow. So, so. you, you got to close that one. Yeah, you, you probably will be assigned here because if your shorts are at 250, 
your extrinsic value here that the counterparty is giving up is well under the dividend. So you're probably assigned here, um, unfortunately. Yeah. Got to close that one. 247. 250, 260. But yeah, this is this has got to be. Uh, is this profitable? I'm having a hard time visualizing this one. This is this got the like a backwards one, right? Uh, 247 and a half. Two four, yeah, 247, 250, 260. Yeah, so, this, so you're out. You're out two bucks. Yeah. If you close it, you're you're buying it back for two fifty. Yeah, minus whatever your credit is, so you're out. I imagine you did it for a fifty sixty cent credit, probably something like that. Uh, PG buy the one forty five put in Feb, sell one forties in the exp expiration for Friday three times. Ratio life. Buy the 145, sell the 140s, ding, ding. I mean, it's having a big move today. Yeah. With the rest of the market. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is a certainly a possibility here. Capital intensive, though. Mm hmm Because you're selling two extra naked puts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dan, don't we all want to make some money off Netflix so we can afford a one-year HBO Max subscription? So what I've learned is uh, the trick is to like go through the process, like you're going to subscribe, and then just stop. And then <laughs> the next couple of days, what do you know comes in the inbox? Here's 20% off of your uh, subscription. For, that you're I, thought, to I thought you were going to say use the uh, alias emails. You know, like just add plus one to your email and just keep doing that week to week. That's fair. You could do that too. You could yeah. really game the system doing that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've, I've found that if you just get to the point of almost subscribing and then you don't, you're you're in some kind of remarketing campaign where you've, you've got to the last part, but you haven't hit the button and then they send you something. Um, or if you like subscribe and then you click to cancel it, they'll be like, oh, we'll give you 30% off if you don't cancel. Things mm -hmm. like that. There's always ways to game the system with these subscriptions. PDD, my put back on the table. So I got the 85 strike long put part of my diagonal spread. The, I closed out of the 80 strike. I was very far out of the money. Um, big move today, obviously getting some money back there, but I'm still in the hole about 150 bucks. So going to be holding that. You got 30 days to go till expiration, but looking better today. Uh, Herb, with a good question here. Tom and Tony said they roll up the untested side after a twenty, a fifteen or twenty delta move. Any reason you don't do that? They don't wait until being breached. Um, they just have a lot more positions than we do, so their their position, their overall position, their overall ecosystem of positions uh, is more important to manage from a portfolio level. But if we only have like you know five or six actual positions here, if you exclude the shares that I have then I'm more worried about this particular position rather than the portfolio as a whole, if yeah. that makes sense. So, so or, or exactly what Craig said below, uh, that Tom and Tony are old and weak. That's why they, <laughs> they can't okay. take the got directional it. risk. Got it, got it. Um, uh, BBBY, um, did we just, did you just talk about this? No. I didn't know is I mean it is hard to borrow so it's 162% borrow fee but yeah I don't I don't know what IB is doing that's that's on them um but yeah short away if you'd like uh Sandra I think you emailed me Sandra um my earlier question was calendar spreads if you think they are going to go down you go to the lower estimate strike price. Why not go to the higher estimate uh, estimated strike price and let the buy to open put gain money? So it, it's a pure calendar spreads are pure extrinsic value trades. Yeah, you could you could move your long put up one or two strikes and make it into a tight diagonal spread. 
mm -hmm. if you want that extra delta exposure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, when you use the same strike, they, it doesn't matter if your short option is assigned, it doesn't matter if it goes in the money because your long option represents 100 shares of short stock in Netflix and your short option represents 100 shares of long stock in Netflix. So they, the intrinsic value completely offsets and it is a true pure extrinsic value trade, which is why your max loss is just the debit paid. I think that was your question that you emailed me. But um, yeah, you could go, you could move this higher if you move these strikes higher, it's just a more neutral trade, less bearish. If you move them lower, it's a more bearish trade because you still get all of the extrinsic value in your short, but your long option can now go from you know $6 to 21, where if we start with a $13 option and it goes to 21, it's just a less, there's less of a multiplication factor with the long option. Yes. So the further out of the money you go, the more directional it is, even though it's a calendar spread. More on BBBY, uh, you will have call skew there, and that I see some people commenting on like put call parity and all that stuff. Here is when you do have a stock that's very hard to borrow or has a high borrow rate, those calls trade more expensive and and obviously further out of the money because they have risk of of being you know called away. You could be short shares there, and those are are hard to borrow. And then the puts on the other side of that, like if you want to get a synthetic short stock position, they're going to be more expensive because of that borrow rate. So if you were looking at, say, the 20 strike put in February, it's got 18 cents of extrinsic value. And, you know, compared to buying the two strike call, which has, you know, or the one strike call, which basically has the same amount of extrinsic value. Like you can get long the shares and only, and you know, pay two dollars, or you can get short them and have to pay two grand. Mm -hmm. You know, that's kind of the difference in extrinsic value there. Uh, last but not least, what environment would you do a weekly credit spread, or would you ever do a weekly credit spread? We typically don't do them for earnings, uh, just because like even though you could do it for Netflix earnings, if you're wrong, there's you just can't really do anything. Like if I sold this 310, 305 with two days to go, if Netflix tanks and the spread's in the money, I can't defend it. Like it's just in the money, it's done. Where at least with a longer term position, like a calendar spread or something like that, you have more time for the trade to reverse in your favor. So we, we typically won't do weekly credit spreads just because the defensive management is very limited. Two years for SPACs, Mikey, that was, that's, that's the limit. Yeah, that's so end of this year. So it's kind of like if you just stop paying your mortgage or stop paying your rent, you've got about two years before you're evicted. Exactly, exactly. You're getting an eviction from the markets. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, what a time to be alive. All right. Thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions, let us know. I'm at Trader Mikey B. Nick's at Trader Nikki Bat. We got more content, of course, coming up next on Tasty Live uh, YouTube channel as well as the site. We got Chris Vecchio coming up. He's amazing. So check out that content. Stay tuned for that. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens with these earnings. A couple of those ones that we reviewed uh, last time to trade it would be today. Netflix uh, is tomorrow, though. So you have another day if you're, if you're still tinkering around with that. But we'll post our trades to the Tasty Works follow page. And uh, we'll see you same time, same place, 11 a.m. Central tomorrow. Peace. Peace.